Welcome to our third day of our FDP with regards to designing outcome-based curriculum practices. Today we have amongst us Dr. Pradnya Vakpanjin for teacher accountability in outcome-based curriculum practices. And from five to seven, we will be having Professor Vinu Paul from this. And uh, that's how our today's session will be. Before I request uh, Dr. Bajoy to introduce Madam, I would like to uh, request all the participants, as I have already told you on your WhatsApp, that there are certain qualifying uh, marks for certification. The entire marks of grading system is 100. There are qualifying marks of 50. And there are certain criteria, the bifurcation of which I'm stating to you right now. Attendance is 10 marks. Online quiz is 30. Assignment 20 marks and project will be 40 marks. So please see to it that uh, your presence, your participation is very, very important. Like I told you, we do not just want an output, but we want a transformational outcome that we can gain from this FDP. So uh, with these words and uh, hoping to see all of you in an engaging participative mode or most of our resource person you will see will uh, insist on you interacting and participating. So all of you, please be active and participating. That will make this FTB even more uh, stimulating for all of us, bring us all together. It can lead to more collaborative practices. On this note, I request Dr. Bajoy Thomas to introduce our speaker for the day. Okay, good afternoon to one and all present here. Let me introduce our resource person for today's session, uh, Professor, Professor Pregna Vakpanchin. Professor Pregna is currently working as the professor and head at the Department of Education, SNDT University, Mumbai. When I talk about her experience in the field of education, Madam has an experience for almost 25 years in the field of teacher education. Madam is also the research guide at SNDT University, Mumbai. Under her guidance, seven research scholars have awarded the PhD and currently six research scholars doing their PhD work. Madam had completed her PhD in education and MED from SNDT University. And also she had completed the PG diploma in education management from University of Mumbai. Madam is a passionate researcher and her research work focuses upon exploring the sociological, psychological and cultural competence in the field of educational practices. Many of her research projects are related to this topic like mathematics thinking, metacognition, women empowerment and social justice. Under the experimental researchers, Madam had developed various training packages for teacher competencies, self-regulated learning and brain-based learning. Madam also has an expertise in the field of research methods, both quantitative as well as qualitative methods in education and organizing various innovative practices for professional development of school teachers as well as teacher educators. She has been the principal investigator of many research projects funded by ICSSR, MSCW, and SUUTI. Madam has also published research articles in the area of educational art practices and developed many e-modules for EG Patashala and UNESCO OER 4W project. And there are many e-modules that she had developed under various projects. Madam was one was also the member of various national and international level institutions for curriculum design and course development. She is the member of board of studies of various universities. And now she has an she also and in charge associate dean of faculty of interdisciplinary studies at SNDT University, Mumbai. We are honored to have Professor Pratna with us today to share her insights and experience on the topic, teacher accountability in outcome-based practices. Ma'am, thank you so much. On behalf of St. Saviour's Institute of Education, Mumbai and GAD TLC Center, Delhi, and all the participants attending on the platform, we welcome you to this particular session. Thank you and over to you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vijay, sir. It's indeed a great pleasure to be associated with St. Xavier's as always. But uh, I think since now we are in working in collaboration. So again, it's it's a great uh, opportunity to get connected with the GAD uh, Teaching Learning Center. Uh, I'm extremely thankful to Principal Dr. Vini, ma'am, for giving this opportunity uh, 
to interact with people and also to extend our horizon as far as the teacher education field is concerned. So I really thank the heads of both the institution and all my colleagues uh, in St. Xavier's. Uh, uh, it's indeed a great pleasure to, to talk about what we are now talking about the outcome-based education. Now, since we are from the field of education, our responsibility, I think, is more. And the society at large is also expecting a lot many things from us. So we being the people in the field of education actually are accountable to reform the education system at large in the country. So since our role is so instrumental, it is so significant role that we have to uh, play in the, in the future also. Uh, but uh, with the NEP, we have already started working on, working on the curriculum. We are being teacher and we have been working uh, a lot for the students. However, when we talk about the outcome-based education, it's not that the something new for us, but let us, you know, like look into it once again, or I would say, you know, they refresh ourselves because uh, the different kinds of the societal structure, the changes, they keep on, you know, going on. But with, with the changing scenario, we also uh, address to the situation. We also address to the problems. And therefore, when we talk about the outcome-based education, you probably must have heard about what is outcome-based education, what it expects from us, and uh, how one has to go about the outcome-based education. So the outcome-based education is not something that is very new. I'm sure a lot of you must be knowing about the outcome-based education and a lot of controversies about it. So can I get some some of your views that what is your opinion about it because since you must have had the exposure to the outcome based education and also as i said that we have been practicing it yeah so i'm just expecting uh, you know people to respond to it that what are their views about it you may write it in chat Uh, Ma'am, outcome based education is a successful assessment of ability, skills, and knowledge of the student. Okay, good. Yeah, anybody else? <clears throat> I think it focuses on uh, basically understanding what the students need to know, that is the outcome, then mm -hmm. plan for the assessments, uh, basis of what uh, the student's uh, desired outcome needs to be, and then we plan for the learning engagement. Okay, great. Yes. Yeah, somebody has written. Ma'am, it is final outcome of curriculum. Yeah, okay, final outcome of curriculum. Yeah. yeah. Okay, anybody else would like to add something? <clears throat> Ma'am, on the chat, there is student centric, student -centric education. education. Okay. So there is, there are, yeah, please go ahead. Ma'am, it's uh, focusing on what ultimately the learners are uh, able to demonstrate. I mean, it okay. is more learner centric. What capabilities and all they can demonstrate and exhibit is okay. individual learners. Okay, great. Yes. There is one more in the chat. So bring out maximum. Uh, we can also say that instructional objectives are student uh, teacher centric, where the learning outcome is uh, student centric. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah, what students are expected and able to do. Okay, 
students are expected to know and be able to do that is what skill and the knowledge they need to okay okay so now with this some um, thank you very much for your interaction so we'll keep uh, interacting like this uh yes uh what we are expecting that yes we expect our student to know this thing we expect our students to develop these skills we expect our students to to perform in some way now the outcome based education what the uh, spade talk about he said that first to think of what after completion of this particular program what do you expect your graduate to be look like so say for example suppose i am a teacher and i am dealing with a subject like history yeah any anybody wants to say something okay i think maybe by mistake okay so uh when we talk about that say for example i am a teacher and i am dealing with the subject like history so if i am dealing with the subject like a history what am i expect i am expecting from my students after the 3 years of this degree program so the outcome based education does not necessarily talk only about the students or the teachers but it also expect the the important role of the institution so the one important thing that we need to understand the outcome based education is expecting us to work in collaboration and therefore the outcome based education play very significant role in framing the structures okay so now we will keep on discussing uh, uh, kalpana madam can i share my screen now yes ma'am okay so we will have the discussions as our uh, ppt goes on and then we will we will have the interaction uh i hope my screen is visible to all of you it's coming ma'am yes. Ah. yes yeah so yes. when you talk about this outcome based education let us see what it means and where our role basically comes in the picture so when we talk about our role as teachers so where is this accountability exists because i am not going to talk about what is accountability or not i think each one of us knows and every teacher takes the responsibility of things what she or he is doing so i very strongly believe in the teachers accountability sense of accountability so i am not going to talk about it so when we talk about the outcome based education the few characteristics we will keep discussing so the first thing that is we are going to define very clearly the exit outcome okay now what do you understand by exit outcome and how can we frame this exit outcome for our students or for our program i would say not for the students yeah ma'am it's based on uh, the academic competency the knowledge the skill mm -hmm. and then the ability that the child is going to showcase okay okay so knowledge skills and ab other abilities, abilities. okay um, anything else what attitude she developed madam after completion of his graduation okay development Anything? of life skills okay yes uh, we can also say development of 21st century skills in the students okay can you just name few communication skills um, employability okay time management okay that is a life skill hmm. development of overall personality scholastic okay. and scholastic and also okay. okay so 
all of you are talking about some of the skills that are associated with their core knowledge. The skills they require, uh, some are generic and some are very specific, right? And along with that, we are also expecting that they should have to have, you know, a, a specific kind of the attitude towards their profession or whatever the work they are doing. Okay. Now, here the uh, the outcome-based education talks about what exactly you want your student to demonstrate at the end of the day. So suppose the, the idea actually has come up from the medical education. Probably all of you must be knowing about it, right? Now they asked us to, 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 to portray or to view what kind of a doctor I want. So that is the exit outcome. So when my when my student completes the history BA, what kind of attributes I can see in the child or in the students? So that's where the entry and some somebody talked about the transformation. So that is where the entry point and the exit point. So the 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 you know the time between the entry and the exit that we are going to spend with these children. That is something which is very important and we are accountable for it. So, but it's not only that only we are, we are accountable for this, but our, actually our work starts much, much before than that. Okay, so we will keep on discussing this. Okay, thank you. The next one that is the time is the alterable resource as per the OBE. And what do you understand by that? Yes. Flexibility, absolutely correct. Anything else? So flexibility in terms of type. Anything else anybody would like to add? The depth of content could be impacted by time. If you have more time, then maybe you can cover more depth and if you have lesser time. That's yeah, point. that's 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 there. But again, the contextuality will come there. Okay, very good point. Okay, so when you talk about the time, it is again as you people have correctly mentioned that we are looking at the student. So according to them. When you talk about the complexity of any task, so everybody may not learn on the same day because everybody's competencies are different, everybody's abilities are different and how the person takes it are different. And that's where, you know, they, they mention that the time is alterable resource for the students. And also when you talk about the availability of the time for the students, for the learning, as well as to access the resources. So both of these things are very important and therefore the contextuality will come in the picture. Yeah. The next one that is criterion best. All of us know about that we have to have very, very specific criteria. And therefore, if we, we talk about the Bloom's taxonomy, we have a very clear, as, uh, at least people who are in the field of education are extremely clear about their learning objectives, right? So we, we, we know that we have the domains and we, uh, we uh, have the objectives and its specification as per the domain. Now in the criterion based aspect, the outcome based education also talked about that you can, you probably should not focusing only on what we usually have in mind. So when we actually frame the syllabus, we always have in mind, ki, okay, this 25%, you know, uh, should be, every child must be able to do it. Or we, we assume the NPC, right? And with that assumption of NPC, we, we decide or we determine, ki, okay, this much percentage of the, uh, curriculum or the content should be, you know, very easy. Then, you know, it, you know, the some 25% bit difficult, then difficult. And then we have the, you know, the most difficult kind of a thing. Here is, you know, 
the OBE challenges. The OBE challenges that who are we to decide and what is our basis of decision of it. So that's why they say that when you talk about the criterion based, it is more individualistic. But at the same time, when we are designing the structures, as we are going to say that we are going to have the flexibility, so flexibility within the structures. So suppose I have the four credit course design. And if the student knows, ki, okay, these two credits, the person knows, ki, okay, I can do this introductory part. I don't want these two credits. I just directly want to jump into the third credit. So there has to be the opportunity in my structure that the child can come uh, and take directly the third module. Maybe I can have some pre-test over there to check whether the, the student really knows the, the have the knowledge of those first two credit or no, that we can have. But this multiple in the context of NEP, when we are talking about the multiple entry and the multiple exit point, this is what is basically they are looking at. Okay? And the accumulation of grades. Now, all of you must be busy working with the ABC identification number, right? All of us are busy doing that thing. Now, this is the one space that is created for the accumulation of these grades. Similarly, our institutions will also need to create the technological spaces so that the grades can be accumulated. I think all of you will agree with me that there is always a lot of chaos in the examination section, right? So those students who are present, they are marked as absent, and there are a lot of issues related to their internal mark, their external mark, and lot, lot, lot many things are there. Now the grade accumulation is something that is going to play a very important role. So wherever I want to take, I can accumulate that grades in my DG locker. And that's why we are going for that ABC identification numbers, right? So now we have started at the system level. However, we are not aware of it. That is one thing. The second thing, we as an individual teacher, I'm not saying institutions as a system are not aware of it. So there are many institutions. What they have done, they have ask the students to create their ABC IDs. Students, they have created, but then what is the role of institution? The role of the institution is to update it on the university portals. So that is not happening. So if you visit your national portal, you will find that, okay, there are, you know, 20 lakh students of University of Mumbai who have their ABC ID created. But when you check the university site, you find it's only the 25,000 students you can see. So it means where is the gap? The gap is somewhere where the colleges, they have not uploaded the updates of the students on their portal. So some, some things are missing and that we really have to take care of it. Okay. So the ABC actually talks about this and with the onset of this NEP now, we, we will have to work hard for all these things because we are going to face a lot of problems, okay? And it's really difficult because when you talk about the education of masses, things are very, very difficult, okay? So with these characteristics, now we will move on to do the next one. Yeah, now I'm just going to give you some task. I think uh, Kalpana Madam just asked you to have, you know, be attentive. So <laughs> as for the instructions, now I'm giving you task. So let's get engaged with some of the things. First, we will take one by one. What do you want your students to become? Okay, whatever the programs you are dealing with, whatever the subject you are dealing with, think about it. And what attributes you are looking for? So if I'm teaching history, 
what am i looking at at the end of the 3 years or if you are in the bed colleges then identify ki okay suppose i am dealing with uh, the learners uh, learner and the society so what are my you know what what am i expecting my students to have which kind of the attributes i am looking at so choice is yours if you want to take your subject and go ahead you can do that or you can take the bed as a program and think about ki after this what am i expecting my graduate to be look like okay so what you first first we will work on what you want to they become so whether i want my my students i'm dealing with them so maybe i say okay i want them to be a teacher educator i want them to be a researcher i want them to research to be a research assistant i also want them to be the statistical analyst i also want want them to be the field investigator okay so i'm just giving example so first we will take the first uh, question and just list out whatever uh the occupation the vocation uh and the profession comes in your mind that has the close association with your program just list it out okay so we'll take 2 minutes for that and then we will go ahead with the performance standards okay so first we will just think about whatever you want so after bed what am i expecting my students to be able to do मैं उनको कैसा देखना चाहती हूँ सो दे इट्स नॉट ओनली दैट आई वॉन्ट माई यू नो माई स्टूडेंट ओनली टू टीच इन अ स्कूल आई कैन एक्सपेक्ट मेनी मोर थिंग्स राइट सो वी विल फर्स्ट लुक इन टू इट की वॉट आई वॉन्ट फ्रॉम दैम एंड देन वी विल गो फर्दर ओके सो विल टू मिनट्स विल बी ओके कल्पना मैम यस मैम ऑलरेडी दैट इज गेटिंग फिल्ड अप ओके that in quite interesting good things right mm, very good. yeah very interesting okay thank you very much so we will just read out for everybody yes kalpa ma'am if i am i'm missing something please help me out okay i think uh, we start from uh, it's quite a few no good citizen entrepreneur i think anjana anjana onwards we have ha yeah positive teaching attitude towards subject motivator ethical valued person okay an entrepreneur okay good
entrepreneur, then good citizen, then teacher educator, be a teacher. I want they will become a good human being, good person, good guy to become good listener. Okay. Socially sensitive, caring, thinking, heart, and active minds. Okay. Uh, okay. Home economy. Very good. National builder, language skills, reading, writing, poet. Wow. Mindful motivator, good communicator, problem solver, risk taker, empathetic, good scientist, dedicated to country, positive attitude, self problem solving, good communication, efficient, productive, professional, sound, health, responsible, global citizen, influencer, and transformative personality, learner through their resourceful and daring human being. Yeah, become responsible citizen. Decision maker, critical thinker, self-directed learner, global citizen, empathetic, positive thinking, helpful, effective citizen, financial market graduate should be able to trade in a stock market, have ethically sound, researcher, empathetic towards the minorities in the society, creative, generate ideas, receptive to new men. empathetic, inclusive teacher, Active action researcher, good resource creator, organizer, okay. All round development, data scientist, researcher, programmer, happy and peaceful person, okay. What the human beings, reformer for society, delay, creative, elegant, resourceful individual, multitasker, inspiring school teacher and instructional, responsible citizen, generic skills, whatever. okay. Now. If we are looking at this, I am sure all of you have probably thought of your own field and you have identified, okay, I want my graduates to be like this. Now, in connection with that, what will be your performance standards? Take only one. Say, for example, you want the students to be data analyst. What will be the performance standards you are looking at? If you want them to be a school teachers, what performance standards you are looking at? Okay. So another two minutes. Take only one and then we'll move on. Yeah, take motivator. Now you set the performance standard for motivator. Yeah. Could you get my point? Yes, participants. Uh, no, ma'am. Could you give us an example? Yeah. Okay. Can you give an example? Okay. Now say for example, if I want my students to be a researcher. Okay. I'm just giving because it's easy for me to, to give that. Okay. Now suppose I want my students to be, you know, a good researcher at after the end of the MED program. So my performance standard will be that the students will be able to write the research proposal and, you know, like gain the funds. Because I'm expecting my students to be a good researcher. So all other abilities, all other competencies I'm developing so that she must be in a position to, to write a quality proposals and then give it further to the funding agencies. Okay. Somebody has written for the scientist. Yeah. Other, peop other people also, they can just continue working. Okay. Good trader in a stock market. Okay.
Okay. Now, you people are giving good answers. Now, I'm taking you further. Now, if I want my students to be a writer or the poet, or I want, so what are that attributes? ओके फॉर द स्कूल टीचर दैट इज पेडागोकल नॉलेज जैसे अकाउंटेंट के लिए भी कुछ नॉलेज लगेगा हमें होम इकोनॉमिकल्स आई वॉन्ट डेम टू रेस्पेक्ट देयर डिसीजन मेकिंग ओके गुड कंप्यूटर लैंग्वेज स्किल ओके ओके नाउ टेक वन एंड अगेन प्रोसीड फर्दर student who can understand observe all things well okay bhasha muhavre ka upayog shabd bhasha ka upayog okay this is for the writing right critical thinking Okay, Anuradha ji, can you please specify further critical thinking, inductive, deductive? Can you just move on? Sure, I'll just put down things. Yeah. Yeah, or maybe you can just tell us. No issues. of logical flowchart to develop application related to real life problem. Okay. Yeah, I just want some clarification. Probably I'm not getting it correctly. Understand the usage of logical flowchart to develop applications related to real life problem. Now, uh, may I ask you from which field are you? Are you from education or are you from other field? Okay. Good communicator. Absorbent mind, passionate to learn, keeps updating, creative, positive thinking. Okay. Okay. Poet writer, ability to offer the wisdom, cleans to the one's experience in a manner that touches, provoke the another's thought processes. Good. Deductive reasoning, draw conclusion, taking all consideration, various uh, possibility, inductive, think of the various possibility. Okay. Okay, now I think we have done quite a big exercise on this. Now, yeah, proficiency in reading, writing, communication skill, critical thinking and problem solving for journalists. Yes, okay. So now if you are looking at the journalist, you are expecting all these things, correct? Now further, I'm taking you where you identify what are these. Now we have seen, everybody has written the, the expected standards, right? So performance standards, everybody has written. Now identify what are these generic and what are the specific attributes you, are, you can see. The generic you will find in majority of the cases.
Let us move on. What are the generic one we have? Yes. Yes, very good. Communication and language proficiency. Absolutely correct. Yes. Next one. Soft skills, creative thinking, problem solving ability. Absolutely right. Reasoning, correct. Reflective thinking, absolutely correct. Life skills, yes. Okay. Now we will move on to the specific. Yeah, the generic, we, we got it that the skills that are required across the disciplines. Now let us come to very specific. So as a motivator, you require some specific thing. As a teacher, we require some specific, specific knowledge, specific skill sets. Okay, patience. Okay, pedagogical knowledge for a teacher. Generic for school teacher would be the pedagogical. Specific would be the skill of using differentiated instruction in a class. Okay, good. But pedagogical knowledge itself can be a specific knowledge, right? Ruchi, I'm not getting what you have written. Relevance and under understandability. Is it your generic knowledge? It's a specific knowledge. If it is specific, which graduate aptitude you are looking for? Yes, in their respective field, absolutely. Now this is your the specific knowledge when you talk about it is your core knowledge, right? Yes, competent in digital skill and teaching now that has become now very specific because we don't expect that we should know the tally, right? As a teacher. Okay. So now when, if you just talk about your, yeah, generic, that is community, community sensitization, specific empathetic action and collaboration. Uh, can I just have one question on this? Empathetic action and collaboration, is it a specific or it is again a generic? Uh, that is again a generic only, but uh, when we uh, do uh, community work and all, no, ma'am, uh, mm -hmm. the the general uh, objective, I mean, the outcome that we are expecting is uh, their awareness about the community issues and all. For example, when we talk about the child abuse and all, so what type of uh, the abuses the children have? Mm -hmm. So this type of, you know, awareness, but when it is coming to the uh, specific one, would it be like, you know, uh, whatever... <laughs> I mean, the skills and all specifically we need to develop. If we are sending them yeah. to the community, how they are going to collaborate with them, how yeah. they are going to... Uh, but yeah, unless uh, we are empathetic, we will uh, not be sensitive towards the uh, community, uh, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. So it's uh, many okay. times they are overlapping, they are interlinked, uh, they are, you know, 
so mm. they have the linkages at the different different places so what you okay. try to uh, convey us is that you know the intensity matters right so yes, intensity yes, of your empathetic action probably you know leads to uh, the problem that, that you are dealing with right so as a yes, teacher yes. i may be empathetic towards my uh, students but when it comes to the, you know, like some skills that I just want the students to develop, I probably may not be empathetic over there, right? Yeah, yeah. I may, I, you know, yeah. I may give the child the challenges. Yes, over yes. there, I should yeah. not be, you know, like, are bichari, are bichara, you know? Uh, yes, yes, yes. That right? Is right. Okay, uh, thank uh, you. Uh, okay, thank you. Okay. So now we are, uh, we understood that when we talk about the objective based education it's not like the traditional structure so what we usually do is that we frame the structures right and then we put the content into it correct now here it is the some fundamental difference that they talk about you first think about what you want your graduates to be and then go back and back and back and back and back and then probably you will be able to generate some core knowledge areas, some areas that are specific, some skills again that are very specific, and some of the areas they call it as a tool areas. So again, they are very specific. So the most important point what OBE differs is that they say that don't just frame the structure in hand and then put the content inside. Think of the exit outcome. Even this, when the student is going out of my college, how she or he looks like. Another very important thing what they talk about is that you don't have, you know, the discrimination of the boys and the girls. See? You, you set your high standards and see if it is achieved by the boys or they are achieved by the girls or they both of them are achieving. Let them achieve it. So your performance standards, you are not going to dilute. But here, the most important thing is that think about the exit outcome. जो भी काम वो कर सकेगा उस काम के लिए मुझे क्या-क्या करना चाहिए सो सम स्किल्स सम सेट ऑफ स्किल्स एंड सम नॉलेज विल बी डेफिनेटली वेरी वेरी जनरल एंड सम स्किल्स विल बी वेरी वेरी स्पेसिफिक पर्टेनिंग टू दैट पर्टिकुलर प्रोफेशन राइट मैम मैम व्हेन वी टॉक अबाउट दिस जनरल दैट आउटकम्स Hmm. Can we say like, you know, uh, it is uh, matching with the institutional uh, missions and all. And then when it is coming to specific outcome, is it like, you know, the course objectives or the course outcomes? Yeah. Uh, your, on which, uh, yeah. Yeah. Your program outcome and your course outcome, right? Uh, yes. No. Correct. So your program uh -huh. outcome and your course outcome are very specific. Yes. Okay. The okay. program outcome, uh, huh. is it like, you know, like the missions of the institutions? I mean, you said, you know, the collaboration is not just between the teacher and the learner, even huh. the institution. Correct. So the uh, institution's mission is also going to get reflected in the program outcome. Correct. Is it correct? Good, yes, uh -huh. absolutely correct. Okay. Then when okay. it is coming to the specific attribute, huh. uh, the course outcomes, I mean, uh, after teaching four papers and the huh. special field and methodology and then huh. the practicum and all whatever we have in the B.A. syllabus. Huh. So from that, what type of, uh, you know, uh, outcome huh. we are expecting? Yes. What the children are going to, student teachers are going to demonstrate. Correct. So do you expect huh. that the science teacher will have some different attributes than the language teacher? Uh, yes, ma'am. Now Correct. when we talk about science, yes, yes, ma'am. Right. Uh, so yes. this is where, you know, like the OBE wants us to work on. Because we all are mm. teacher educator. We are in mm. the process of, you know, like preparing good uh, teachers. Mm. However, mm -hmm. I as, a, you know, a science method master need to look into it. Ki how my science uh, teacher will be different from the language teacher. Some generic things are will be there for everybody. Everybody, yes. Yeah. Yes. 
ठीक है सो दैट्स वाई इफ यू जस्ट लुक इन टू यू हैव प्रोग्राम आउटकम यू हैव कोर्स आउटकम एंड यू ऑल्सो हैव द स्पेसिफिक कोर्स आउटकम सो देयर यू आर इलेक्टिव सब्जेक्ट कम्स इन okay and that's the reason now i do not know how many of you have worked on this uh, new structures of the ba and the bcom they are talking about the majors they are talking about the minors and they are talking about the you know some of the cbcs so in the three years you are going to have some of the major courses you are going to these are the core courses you are going to have some major courses you are going to have some minor courses and you are also going to have some of the credit courses and that will be you know the flexibility that nep is going to give us okay yeah thank you very much for your uh, interactions and contribution thank you so i'm just going ahead so when you talk about the critical domain of our outcomes the literacy the content and the performance so in other word the obe talks about the literacy where we talk about key reading the numbers and this thing so basic everybody requires that you are going to have the second point that talk about is the content they say that this is something a core because this core exists therefore that field becomes the specialized field that field becomes a unique in nature so the content you are going to look into what is that a core content i am looking for and then with this both the things we are going to look at the performance attributes so the outcome based education they are looking at this three levels so where in when you talk about the literacy a very generic things that we are talking about the content that is something which is very very core or which is a central to that particular program and then within that you may have the majors and the minors and along with that you may have the skill sets and then you are looking when you are looking at their performance that what am i going to look at so then you will have the different skill sets again i say that the skill sets may be again some are very generic like all of you have said that yes they need to have you know the specific uh, the empathetic towards society that is very general everybody needs it whether i am a teacher or i am a dancer or i am a singer or i am a motivator also when you talk about the generic thing the the socially responsible citizen that is something which is very important so if i am a singer i have to take care that what what kind of the songs i am going to sing how my composition will be and what influence or impact it will have on the society so i believe that my song will not create partition among people hatred among people so i take this responsibility okay so that is again important so what they are saying is that your generic skills are also important it's not that you just have to have only your specific things with you okay now moving ahead anybody wants to have any comment should we go ahead okay so as a teacher we are accountable for looking at these things when we are selecting our content we are writing our structures and we are framing our objectives okay now if you are looking into the entire obe we have a paradigm that how we are looking at it then we have the purposes in mind we also have the premises some operating principles we are going to look into and then we are going to have some generic domain of practice okay because our accountability along with this we will discuss now 
the first thing as as i already mentioned there is a paradigm shift and we are expecting the educational institute take a part in the active learning process of the students and they are also accountable as an institution for the outcome that we are going to produce so if you just look into the the teaching so you know the initially the teaching was considered as you know or something that we are doing for the noble cause then we started looking at it as yes we are service provider we are right now in this phase students they have come they attended college i don't know what they are doing i'm not interested when they go to the field what they are doing so i am a service provider i have my own tools i interacted i finished and then i don't know where they are right now this shift is important and what outcome based education they talk about is the result accomplishment so we are looking at the accomplishment of the result and therefore we have done the exercise what i really look at what am i expecting my students to to be after 3 years of graduation kaha kaha me dekh sakti hu so if i am i think okay they should be in a bank so do i have any provision as a elective subject so if not let me do it so that's how you know this shift is is thought of now as another very very major principle of them is that all students of the system are successful they believe that every student can learn and every student can be successful what is important for them is that as a teacher we need to think on what my students should learn and i also have to ensure whether my students they learned or no so my accountability right from the paradigm starts so i am responsible for deciding the content deciding the knowledge that they should learn deciding the skill they must have so as a teacher my accountability starts here now many of us must be bos members few of us may not be but then it is the institution's responsibility that they must take care that they are collecting the information from all the teachers because it is possible that okay i may not fit into that particular xyz rule of the bos but then is my department taking the feedback on the curriculum from me if you just see the nac also talks about this criteria so what my students need to learn that is what is we are going to decide and the second accountability is whether the student learned or no so we will be looking at two aspects so we have to understand this is something the paradigm shift again i repeat that yes we are the backbone of the system that we can't forget now what are the two purposes what we have that 
ensure that all students are equipped with the knowledge, competence, and the qualities needed to be successful after the exit, they exit the education system. So the purpose of our education system is not only to impart knowledge, but to equip knowledge, right? We were talking about imparting knowledge. Now we are shifting that we are going to equip them with the knowledge so that as and when they require it, they must be in a position to apply it. I'm equipping students with some competencies. I'm equipping students with some qualities, like as you say, empathetic, that is a quality. So that they will be a successful in their whichever field they work. So whether they are working as a journalist, or they are working in a bank, or they are working in a school, or they are working in a teacher education colleges. Then the second purpose of this OBE is to structure and operate institution. I again repeat, it's very, very important point because every time everything is dumped on the teacher's head, ki, okay, the teachers, they haven't done this, the teachers, they haven't done that. But here the OBE is expecting that the institution also must support or the institution also plays very important role. Now, who is going to create the structures? So we as a teacher need to create the structures. We as a teacher need to process the different kinds of electives. And we must insist that this should be in the operation. So there is a lot of debate and a lot of uncertainty that is going on for NEP that how are you going to really take it? But unless we, we try it out, we will not be in a position to really talk about how things can move further. So therefore the structuring, yes, the two types of structuring, as I always say, you have first, the structure that are the physical structure and the second that we have the mental structures and the mental structures are very, very important. So we as a teacher change our mindsets. Ki, okay, we have to now shift from here to here. If we want our students to have the flexibility, we want the versatile personalities. So we have to work hard for it as a teacher and that's where my accountability lies. Yeah. yeah, anybody has any query, please you can unmute and you can proceed with your question, no issues. Uh, yes, ma'am. So yeah. I'll, uh, I, I like the sound of not imparting knowledge, equipping them with knowledge. Hmm. But I was trying to understand this, like, let's say I'm teaching them about uh, Emperor Akbar. Okay, hmm. so I'm imparting knowledge and yeah, so how would that be? How would that be uh, transformed into equipping them with knowledge about empire? Okay. Now, when do we, whenever we impart knowledge, we talk about, okay, the Akbar was like this and this and this and this, right? Uh, so yes, we, it, would not, it would not be purely informative as in it could be done in various activities and getting correct. them to think about his personality, etc. Correct, correct. Now, when I'm equipping, I may give, you know, the any policies of the Akbar, okay? and ask them to interpret it in those contexts. Got it? So there will be a lot of, you know, a lot of thinking will go into it. Because now what we are actually, you know, like focusing more on uh, who was the Akbar, where was born and things like that. However, when you talk about, we, we only decide, ki, okay, XYZ king was, you know, good and XYZ was bad, isn't it? Or our, you know, the textbooks, they are, you know, written in those, those languages also. I mean, I'm sorry to say, but these are some of the facts that we can't deny. So when we are equipping, we are actually taking them more to the problems 
so the akbar has its own place of importance but akbar is not overpower on his quality as a problem solver king got it um ma'am can you elaborate yeah say for example when we talk about a lot of reforms that the akbar has done right correct now it's important that what do they think about it about that reforms why are they thinking those reforms was it really necessary that time let them have the discussions and could it like, and could it be like uh, if uh, if akbar was alive today would his reforms Correct. be so then that's a good thing yes okay, okay or yeah, maybe yeah. can this reform in today's era will be applicable or if you are in the place of akbar what you you do you think you would have done okay yeah got it now so Thank it's you. more you know like we are taking them more to the thinking level okay and also you know we 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 i don't know but we really hesitate to discuss things right because i think we are uh, you know humne apne aap ko bahut bandh ke rakha hai religion se bandh ke rakha hai region se bandh ke rakha hai language se bandh ke rakha hai hum darte bahut hain but jab knowledge ki baat aati hai aur uske discussions ki baat aati hai to daro nahi put everything on the platform koi jhagde bagde nahi hote hai class mein everybody is matured enough isn't it so that's where you know equipping is something where you share when you you know like where you raise question you pose question you give facts and figures and then you you know it's not the only the opinion based okay so that's why it is the equipping with the knowledge okay thank you let's move on to the premise what we have that all students can learn and succeed but not on the same day in the same way so if i have my some expectations but i also have to keep this thing in mind yes everybody is going to learn but everybody has a unique set of competency and therefore you know there can be a time that will you know a more or a less for the learner another interesting premise they believe that your successful learning promotes and ensure i'm sorry this is a spelling mistake instead of e, it has got i i'm so sorry for that so successful learning promotes even more you know even ensure the successful learning so it not only promotes but it also ensures the successful learning so if somebody achieves something then that becomes the motivation for the further learning that is what they basically mean to say okay and then institution controls the condition that directly affects the successful learning as i say the institution so obe is also expecting the institution to create the spaces so that the teachers can function within the spaces and help in achieving our outcome so right now when we talk about the service provider it's only the marks we were looking at ki okay result oriented result first class itne hai second class itne hai but now this is going to look at ki okay these students are from this college okay so they must be a good student teachers so they you know like where the society will look at you in or with the different angle but yes again i repeat it's the institution that is going to create the spaces for the teachers and for the learner because without their support we may move on as a teacher but we may not be able to run that much without their support so that's the that's the problem so that gap should not be created so the institution is going to definitely create the condition as i was giving you the example abc id the students they have created but the institution they have not uplo uploaded it 
सो वेन द गवर्नमेंट इज आस्किंग अस कि आपके बच्चे कितने हैं तो हमें उधर देख दिख रहे हैं लाखों और इधर हम जब देख रहे हैं तो हमें पंद्रह हजार ही दिख रहे हैं सो यू नो दैट इज समथिंग नाउ अगेन आई विल नॉट से दिस इज द मिस्टेक ऑफ इंस्टीट्यूशन ऑल्सो प्रॉबेबली दे हैव नॉट गिवन द प्रॉपर अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ इट दे आर नॉट मच अवेयर अबाउट हाउ दे हैव टू प्रोसेज फर्दर सो आई एम नॉट ब्लेमिंग देम ऑल्सो ये जो हमारे गैप्स है ये गैप्स रहते हैं और इसकी वजह से हमारी पूरी uh, प्रोसेस जो है ना वो हैम्पर कर जाती है ओके नाउ द फोर प्रिंसिपल्स व्हाट दे टॉक अबाउट द क्लैरिटी ऑफ फोकस ऑन कल्मिनेटिंग एग्जिट आउटकम्स ऑफ सिग्निफिकेंस द एक्सपांडेड अपॉर्चुनिटी एंड सपोर्ट फॉर लर्निंग सक्सेस हाई एक्सपेक्टेशंस फॉर ऑल टू सक्सेस and decide down from ultimate and culminating outcomes we we'll look into this into details now all of us have been doing all this things so the clarity of focus that has a clear connection with our instructional planning and instructional delivery right now if we have very very clear vision or clear understanding ki what i really want my graduate to be look like i know i am expecting the student to be able to write good research proposal to be able to develop good data collection tool to be able to administer tool those tools to be able to conduct the interviews during the research to be able to analyze data so my performance demonstrations what i have in mind are very clear our desired outcome somebody did talked about when we started so the desired outcome when we say it is the starting point of our curriculum now i would just again like all of you to just give me the understanding what do you mean by curriculum what is your understanding of curriculum go ahead please is nothing but the additional activities which is perform in the schools like library also mm -hmm. computer uh, resource room also uh, sports room and everything uh, school activities uh, every school, school activity maybe okay. i yes ma'am सिलेबस एजुकेशनल वोकेशनल ट्रेनिंग द टॉपिक एंड सब्जेक्ट कवर्ड इंक्लूडिंग को करिकुलर एक्स्ट्रा करिकुलर ओके ओके ऑल लर्निंग एक्सपीरियंसेस description which is necessary for overall development of children okay okay so when you look into the definitions of curriculum we we usually have you know the syllabus and completion of it however i would just take uh, you know the, the somebody has written you know all learning experiences okay so whatever the learning experiences we are providing in our institution 
that is the curriculum. So our behavior is also a learning experience, isn't it? So as a teacher, when we look at the learning experience, so our learning is yes, skill training. So our learning experiences, they are very. So right from your assembly, right from the activities, what you are undertaking till you are all field work and everything is a part of curriculum. And every activity, at least in BA college, starts with the objective. So when we are talking about the construction of a syllabus or development of the syllabus, I would say, we have these objectives in mind. But as we talked about the OBE said, that desired outcome is your starting point. But if you just have that fix and move ahead, you will not be providing any flexibility. OBE demands your program outcome, your course outcome, your specific course outcome. Everything should be aligned because all these things are interlinked. So when we talk about the curriculum designing, we also need to think about the implementation of it. If we do not think of the implementation of it, again, we are creating the gap. But within the implementation, we must provide the, the space for the flexibility. The clarity of focus will also help us to decide the priority in our instructional planning and student's assessment. Because this assessment is going to be very, very important. So at the end of my BA program, I'm expecting this one, two, three, four, five, six attributes among my student teacher. And therefore, when we talk about the assessment, the assessment also should be aligned with our objectives. So if we are very clear on our outcome, the exit outcome, I would say, then our outcomes then that have the broad outcomes are connected with our program outcome. Then they are connected with the course outcome. And again, within that, you also can have the course specific outcome. As a BA teacher, we have been doing that. We have the lesson plan. Then you have the unit plan. So likewise, we already, we always have the layers of planning. Now, after you have this thing, the interesting point, what they make it is that when you start implementation of this, so your instructional process must start with the sharing, explaining, and modeling of these outcomes. So these outcomes are not only with the teachers, but if I am going to the class, this is my first day. So the first job that I need to do is that I'm discussing the entire outcomes of this syllabus 
I convey them that what do we expect after the two years and after the one year, what do we expect? So if the B.Ed. is a two-year program, so what am I expecting at the end of the two years? And also, if it is the first year, I would expect, okay, this is what I'm expecting in the first year. The idea behind this is that there will be a sharing of ideas, the exchange of information. If the students, they want some clarification, they can have the interaction with the teachers. Sometimes you can also, you know, like uh, bring your alumni. Maybe the last year your students, they have passed out and they are, they are working in an e-learning industry. So you may call that student and give the opportunity to interact with the this new year batch. So there will be a motivation and they also will get to know, ki, okay, this is where my institution is taking me ahead. So the accountability is not only the teachers, but it is the learner who is equally accountable for the learning. And therefore, they say that there is no, you know, no surprise policy here. Otherwise, what happens? The students, they don't even know what their syllabus is. They don't even know what they, they, they have to do and you know very interestingly these certain you know the articles on ob they talk about you know every day is you know like a surprise for the child students when you talk about a traditional system so it's you know whatever the teacher comes up with the you know the surprise that is that is exhibited in the classroom so it is the student and the teacher need to work together I think in many of the beard colleges, we have been trying this. We, okay, we discuss the syllabus with them. We ask them, okay, which, is, which do you think that, you know, the topic should be clear, covered first? Which are the topics where, you know, you yourself can take a lead for the seminars and all? And they, the students, they do take. So if we discuss, we share. And if we give them the entire idea. This is what we are expecting at the end of the two years. And within when we are talking about the two years, we're not only talking about the two, end of the two years, but we are also talking about the one year because now if the NEP is talking about the multiple entry and the multiple exit, this is again going to be more important. Okay, after one year of a BA, what am I expecting? At the end of two years of a BA, what additional things I will have to give so that my this second year child is different from the first year. And then of course I have the third year degree. And again, we are going to have the two types of degrees, the three years and the four year degree program. The second aspect is the expanded opportunity. OBE talked about the expansion of the opportunity. And while talking about the expansion of opportunity, OBE is talking about the time and what they are looking at they are looking at the learning time and the teaching time. So they are bifurcating and collecting also the both the things in a sense that if I say that this is my teaching point, 35 minutes ka mera period hai. So is me mera teaching time kitna hai, bacho ka learning time kitna hai. 
So what we always have the formative assessment or we give them some activity and then we have the discussion. So when they are doing the activities and learning something, then that is their learning time. But when you are actually giving them some instructions or you are participating in the discussion, you are channelizing the discussion or the debates. So that includes both your teaching as well as your learning time. So you can have the permutation and combination of this time frame. Okay. The second thing is that they are talking about the opportunities can be expanded by keeping in mind the different methods and modalities, considering the, some of the concepts like the multiple intelligences. So your, your lessons must be designed to cater to the needs of this different learner. So it will have the variations and it will also take care of the students who are having the different types of intelligence predominant. The third point they, fo they focus is on the operational principle. Now this is something which is very interesting. The OBE talks about creating the motivational spaces for the learner and also the point of challenges for the learner. I believe the most difficult task today we have is, you know, motivating the students. The thing is that everything is available on the click of a button but without understanding its authenticity, they just move on. So how can we motivate them to read more authentic documents, to visit the authentic sites? And as a professional, it is our accountability again to provide them the sites also. If these are the sites or how do we identify which sites are the authentic site for my field? So if I'm a library science person, these are the authentic sites for me. If I'm a person from the education field, these are the authentic sites. Because of lack of that information, many times all of us also sometimes pass on the content which is not a real one, right? Then you have the performance standards. So as I said that according to them, your performance standard, you have to keep high. Let the students move towards it. So similarly, when we are creating the challenges, the challenges what we will be creating, maybe a, a student acquires something very fast. So we are giving them the challenges and the time what is the child is going to learn may be the less compared to the others. But you don't lower down the standards. If you want your students to be a good academic writer, then set the standards and expect, okay, this is what I'm expecting. Convey those standards. But don't just let go the thing, nahi, nahi, wo bichara, you know, she is from very rural, rural area, she won't be able to do it. This is where the OBE, each, you know, ask the questions that who are you to decide? Probably you make them understand, sit with them. They will be able to do it. 
So they have the abilities, but if you are going to, you know, like give them the inputs like this, then it will be a problem. Okay. Yeah. Then increase the access to the high level of curriculum. So our curriculum should have the structures where we are giving them the challenges. We are uh, expecting them to, to provide us the quality assignments. They must undergo the, the thorough evaluation of their, their, the work they have done. And also they must take the responsibility of their own learning. So all these things, you know, are important when you talk about the performance standards. Now the curriculum access and the structuring, the resources availability. If we are teachers, then this is our responsibility to take care that how can I make available the different, different kinds of learning resources to them? How can I go for the co-creation of knowledge? So you may have certain, uh, certain content in the book form. You also made some audio. You also have some video on it. You are also, you have developed some games to assist them. Or even for your content, you probably can, you know, like make use of the games and everything. So your same content, you are making available in different, different forms. So that's what the OBE says that if it is the availability, then you are expanding the opportunity of students. There are many students who are not even aware of the, the library resources, the different databases available in our central university library that they can access it. They don't have that knowledge about it. So they're not aware about it. Now, as a teacher, it is our responsibility to make them understand that this is what is available for you and this is what you have to make use of. Okay. Yeah, I think I'll just check how much time we have. Still, we have some time now. So then now our accountability again goes further. So when we define the outcomes, as we already discussed, then we design our curriculum. That is, we are, you know, right now here, when you are saying curriculum, it is not only the syllabus. It can be any learning experience that you and me designs. Then how am I transacting my curriculum? So in the delivery instruction, I, as a teacher, must be able to take a responsibility of correct content, my language, a very respectful language. I must take care of every child, every diversity into consideration. So when I'm delivering the instruction or I'm transacting the curriculum, I am a teacher, I have to discuss the social issues. Yes, definitely. But I'm not abusive to, to any community, gender, religion, region. No, the facts will remain facts. Facts can also supported with some of the documents. Again, the documents can be verified. So it goes on and on and on. Now, after this, after we, we take the responsibility of transacting the curriculum, the document results. The documentation of the achievement of our students, they are very important. Again, the documents should be created or the document should be maintained also because that is something which is the, we are the custodian of the students' marks and everything. So the documentation of result must be proper and then you go for the advancement. Okay, the first year the child has achieved. So now if she wishes to 
leave the course okay this is what the certificate and now she can go and she will be able to you know do this this this, this thing in the economy so the outcome based system framework it actually looks like this so the entire system if you put into the figure so your clarity of your focus is applicable for your setting the performance standards also and the credential structures also your clarity is expected when you are deciding the curriculum content you are sequencing the content you are again designing the the framework for your graduates because you see you are respond accountability so much that you are going to decide how my students will be like which fields i want them to work and with that thought process now we have to work so just see your you know your responsibility increases to a very very large extent so it is my responsibility if i am very clear on certain things then my curriculum content then articulation that how am i which subjects i just you know when i'm saying okay this is my core subject so why do you think it is a core what will happen if you are not providing that particular because we usually have the debate on you know like when people say uh, why we should have the philosophy or philosophical foundation of education and i never understood why people they raise you know this question and i have been arguing on this the okay you are saying ki, okay why we should why we are having the philosophy and i said okay why not i mean give me the answers for that and then i probably i will be able to justify that why we must have the philosophy because it is the fundamental of education it helps you to think if there is no philosophy i don't think we will we can we will be really able to you know generate some some good ideas so i'm not saying the other subjects are not important but the, it is it's you know like the argument what people they have why we should have philosophy but then the philosophy helps you to to create your understanding your thought processes and that is something which is very very required okay so articulation and the structure kaun sa major dena hai kaun sa minor rakhna hai isko kidhar dalna hai so if it is the education can i take you know the two credits of a music is it which subject from the history will be more applicable to my student see maybe the students will come to us for the guidance ki ma'am mujhe bataiye ki abhi main isme se kaun sa lu i am confused now we as a teacher will have to take this responsibility ki which subject she will be or he will be benefited later so clarity will give us the understanding it will guide us then we will go to design now for design they see is that it is you know design down approach now you know what what they are talking about in design down approach is that they say okay suppose you have certain things like what you say that it is a structure have you shared that structure with your student have you have the discussions with your students regarding that ki what they want to become after the 3 years of this course or 2 years of this course it's very interesting so you can have actually you know the discussions with them maybe you will get some more ideas and then that you can incorporate and i think we as a teacher have been doing this inside the classes right many times our students give us some answer and on the basis of that we just move ahead or we change the strategy and move on so in the design they are saying that 
why can't we also try it out when we are designing our you know the uh, the syllabus so probably you can have this is the reason why now in the 2016 app talks about having one person from the industry or a corporate in a bos that is a mandatory so that you know we get the new ideas we get to know what the economy wants and accordingly we can design our syllabi okay so instructional interaction and technology structures again we will be talking about the delivery system now as we talked about the expanded opportunity we have already discussed so this expanded opportunity is in terms of the time is in terms of the resources we are also going to expand it as we discussed about this eligibility promotion criteria we are not going to come down for it we are going to have the standards but we are going to provide more support to students so that you know these students they will they will go ahead and they will be motivated so we are creating the motivational channel for them rather than discouraging them okay now the last this thing that is the documentation part as we say that the documentation is again very very crucial nowadays and therefore your performance standards the credentials what the students are going to uh, bag in that you will have to you know like prepare in various various forms you will have to have their documentation so the documentation is also going to be a very very important aspect so we are accountable for that if i am missing out something for the student's performance to mention it's you know she or he may lose some good opportunity so that is what is you know is my accountability is okay so if you just look into the four phases i'll quickly go through it i'll not take much time of yours the four phases of obe if you just look into we have the classroom reforms then the program alignments that we already talked about the external accountability the way we have the internal accountability also as we discussed we the teachers they have been always accountable to the society so i'm accountable to myself i'm accountable to my students i'm accountable to my parents i'm accountable to my institution and i'm also accountable to the society so when we talk about the classroom reforms it is you know i am a teacher i have a lot of autonomy over there so i am responsible for delivering the instructions now when i am doing this i just have the second aspect where i have the curriculum that is designed and this curriculum that is designed i have the responsibility of delivering it properly so i am accountable to achieve this course objective when i take this accountability of achieving the course objective naturally i am connected with the achievement of my program outcomes okay so when you talk about the entire system so here you have the classroom reforms where it starts with the teachers it's a micro level then we say that it is something that is given to us from the institutions or maybe the authorities or maybe our uh, curriculum planner i would say so they are responsible for that so this is my program alignment so it is the teachers who are there in this committees where they are going to design the curriculum it is their responsibility to take care that which are the learning uh, the exit outcome they are looking for okay so now these are our exit outcome the different bodies they also need to look into where you know here it is you know ab obe clearly expects 
the role of institution to be able to you know create the spaces and this is possible only when the more and more people are invited in the structuring of the syllabi okay so that we can have you know the better uh, understanding of the society and also we will have the the wider outlook to look towards the society okay now as we say that see our accountability is so high that i am thinking of okay teen saal ke baad india kaisa hoga teen saal ke baad yahan pe kya kya lagne wala hai so just you just have to pull your imagination to i don't know what extent and then with that you know thought processes we are looking into the exit outcome so it's definitely future driven but then for that i must know my social realities i also must know what the economy wants i also must know what are the new changes that you are coming in in the system of education how the entire system is changing so i just can't now think of only you know my student is in us as a school teacher but the e tutor and others so then in that connection what can i do about it okay now as we discussed the your documents now also your external accountability now if i say that yes if i'm writing on my website ki this is what it is you know your career opportunities and if tomorrow somebody says ki no this degree is not valid for this particular job now who is accountable for that the institution is also accountable for that but then the teachers who need to give a clarity in the understanding ki this is what the subject is this is what the demands of the subject and this is what it is and this is how it is going to go about so if we are creating some short courses and if they are preparing the students only for that particular thing let us be objective okay now we we can only you know this course will fetch you only the here let's not talk something very big so the entire face of ob is something where we are looking at the transformation of the system i hope now that we are getting the lot of uh, spaces for that and with that i thank you very much we can have few questions and then go ahead yeah kalpa ma'am yeah can we have few questions yes any anybody has there is any questions or any observation or any suggestions to make uh, it's open now the forum is open for us i think in between also when they had a query they did clarify okay yeah that i think seema had clarified her doubt is it yes i have one question yeah, yeah please go uh, ma'am in between the session you have just given two aspects of accountability can you just uh, tell me which are those see the uh, when you talk about the accountability it is the accountability for you, yourself that as a teacher i am accountable for something right so if i am thinking of okay 3 years down the line i am expecting you know these 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 are the thing where my students can go so it's me who is you know like looking at that 3 years me kya hone wala hai okay so you know even if i have this opportunity ki okay i can frame certain things or i can i am in a position to have the exit outcome but imagine my responsibility is much much more similarly as a teacher also uh we are accountable for many thing like for example i'm just giving like time we talked about time right now uh if i go 5 minutes late 
okay in a class nobody says anything to me right it's a indian culture but then i need to be accountable to myself what right do i have to waste the you know the 5 minutes of those 50 students okay so this is somewhere my accountability comes if yes i agree that there are a lot of things you know in between may come but have i have i you know like told the students ki okay today i have this kind of thing so now i am providing this work so i am expecting you to so you know let us respect their time also okay so this accountability as a teacher you know i take this accountability ki okay i am responsible for this things okay then we are accountable to our students as well right whether they learn what are what are the difficulties they face and things like that okay we are also accountable to our institutions right because without our institution we are nowhere so we we follow their vision and we take we are responsible to create the image of our institution in the society right at the end we are accountable to the larger society if i'm just giving very broad example if i'm just allowing students okay aap nahi aaye to bhi chalega i'll mark you present no issues ghar mein raho sirf exam ke liye aa jana right now where is my accountability for the society ye matter nahi hai ki sirf mere ko student mil rahe hain nahi mil rahe hain in the long run am i responsible or am i contributing for the destroyment of the society yes that's the question i need to ask i may have to strong enough ki okay theek hai i'm just taking this responsibility ki nahi i we will we will provide you some additional resources whatever but you will have to be you know like everybody will agree with me ki when when you know we are you uh, our pro our course b ed program is like such that it really demands you know the lot of efforts right all of us will agree with me that and we we know that how rigorously we we take those entire thing ek ek activity hum itna mehnat se lete hain so therefore you know i am accountable to society it's not i am accountable to my institution but here i am accountable to society so what kind of a teacher i am preparing for the society so i need to answer that am i providing a very punctual teachers am i am i very particular ki okay i just want you to be very very punctual so that's how we are right from our own self to the society we are accountable yeah yes ma'am thank you so much thank you so much so uh, ma'am uh, one more question uh, i would like to ask because uh, i am teaching in my college history pedagogy hmm. and one example related to history you have given as a uh, the students uh, go with the debate something some the situation comes uh, in front of you and while discussion you have given that uh, while to make debate in the classroom so how to avoid avoid such situation in the classroom because uh, really it becomes sometimes times difficult to handle such situations in the classroom yeah. Uh, see, so how do uh, this learning outcome can be connected to this yeah see the learning outcome based education also talk one very important thing that it is not something related to belief it is not something related to you know your attitudes okay right right yeah. and what happens you know whenever it comes pertaining to your religion region language we people think in a you know like very emotional so rather than a logic we go only by one correct yes true so so you know you may you like for i'm i'm just giving example there are so many people you know who say ki superstition but i believe the superstition true superstitions are existing in all religion across form may be different barabar hai ji bilkul barabar bilkul barabar ma'am yes so bring, yes bring it on a table and student batate hain ki okay ma'am i belong to this hamare idhar na aisa hota hai i belong to this hamare idhar aisa hota hai 
नाउ दिस दे रियलाइज कि हाँ हर रिलीजन में ऐसा है और ये सारे हमको बुद्धू बनाने पे तुले हुए हैं यू नो सो दैट्स अ ब्रॉड थिंग एंड यू नीड टू हैव अ लॉट ऑफ पेशेंस यू नीड टू बी वेरी कल्चरली सेंसिटिव एंड यू हैव टू बी यू नो लाइक नॉट गेट कैरीड अवे विथ की यू नो इट्स माई रिलीजन तो ये बहुत अच्छा है दूसरा रिलीजन अच्छा नहीं है काइंड ऑफ थिंग सो वी हैव टू बी वेरी केयरफुल careful means you can do that but if you start thinking about we as a human then you know like anything is possible yes any other question please thank you very much for the question thank you so much ma'am thank you so much thank you thank you everybody for your questions if we have more questions we will also be uh, directing it to madam you can write to us on yes. lms and we can direct it to ma'am uh, because our next resource person also is in the forum so uh, questions we will still take but we will direct it later to madam i would like to thank you dr pradhya ma'am madam has been my teacher and teacher of philosophy and when madam spoke about why is philosophy required today and we understand that teachers like madam can keep philosophies alive can keep the need for philosophy alive madam herself started with a philosophical or a socratic method where madam didn't assume that only the source of knowledge is with her it was all discovered from us and from that discovery there was so much clarification madam as you have rightly pointed out who are we to decide how much the students can go the accountability lies so much in our hands that we can raise their standards we can help the students to move on rather than labelizing them i could almost feel everywhere a self directed empowering engaging way of teaching that can be inculcated through your talk uh outcome based might be from student side but it is also the objectives or outcome what the teachers have put for themselves and their students are important so thank you madam for making us also aware and also realize the accountability level that we have to bring about the uh, outcomes from the students most importantly i found out uh, how you can raise their standards how you can they have the potentials and outcome based is going to help us to move it thank you so much for coming here ma'am sparing your valuable time and with all those beautiful things ma'am also the reference uh, the spadi's book also yeah. if we want to uh, share we can yeah. share with, there are uh, some articles also i'll just share with you the ppt and other things also yes, because uh, i just have the reference list of reference i just left in my office yesterday because of the knack you know yes uh, so i'll just send it to you yes, okay there useful. are a lot of good yes. articles and this actually it is given in 1988 by spadi probably you might be knowing about it yes ma'am but right now we are talking about it but yes and he was a sociologist i mean yes, though we talk about it as correct started from the medical sciences and engineering now the engineering everywhere you will find the gadget attributions and everything they made it compulsory aict uh now we are moving uh, for our social sciences also okay so thank you very much thank you both the organizer i would say and uh, um dr bijoy and kalpana and other colleagues of mine thank you very much nice to interact with you thank you Marini thank you dr vini bye bye all right thank you ma'am may i leave now yes ma'am please thank okay, you thank thanks you so yeah, ma'am thanks pradeep ma'am thank you thank you so bye. much bye 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 everyone thank you. good evening one and all present it's my proud privilege to introduce today's resource person professor bino paul as i introduce professor bino paul i am reminded of a quote passion and dedication are essential to any career but the one thing that really ignites your passion for a subject or a particular industry is actually experiencing it for yourself and i think the quote is very apt with respect to professor bino paul to introduce professor bino paul currently professor bino paul is a de deputy director pro vice chancellor professor center for human resource management and labor relations school of management and labor studies at tata institute of social sciences mumbai to speak about sir's academic qualifications Sir has done BA in economics from Christ College, 
University of Calicut, India, MA in Development Economics from University of Calicut with a dissertation topic, Cochin Export Processing Zone, a Performance Evaluation. MPhil in Planning and Development, Department of Humanities and Social Sciences, Indian Institute of Technology, IIT Mumbai, with a dissertation topic, Capital Formation and Saving in India, Trends and Determinants. Sir has done his PhD in Economics from Department of Humanities and Social Sciences, Indian Institute of Technology, IIT Mumbai, on the topic, Institutional Role in Knowledge Activity Guide. Sir, regarding his career, Canvas Sir has an association of nearly two decades with Tata Institute of Social Sciences at various levels and in various capacities, starting as a lecturer in 2001, as an associate professor in 2007, and now professor and various other designations. Apart from that, Sir has worked with Drishti Strategic Research Services Mumbai as a research executive and as an assistant professor at Ta Pai Management Institute, uh, Manipal. Today, Sir will be speaking about role of academic planning in outcome-based curriculum practices. Once again, a warm welcome to Professor Bino Paul on behalf of the management, principal in charge, Professor Vinnie Sebastian and members of faculty of St. Xavier's Institute of Education, Autonomous Mumbai. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Elvina, ma'am, uh, for the uh, introduction. Uh, our principal in charge, Professor Vini Sebastian, also there uh, in this uh, meeting. Welcome you, ma'am, uh, to this particular session. Over to sir for the presentation. Okay. So foremost, I thank uh, Professor Elvina Perira for a very, very generous introduction. And uh, the Professor Vini, uh, who has been in touch with me, contacting through multiple fora, uh, virtual uh, email or WhatsApp. And then uh, Dr. Binoy, Dr. Kalpana, and all uh, friends, colleagues, uh, once again, welcome to my session. And for me, it's a great opportunity to share. Uh, my thoughts, musing, uh, not in literal sense, the voice of a uh, professional educator, uh, but rather, I would say, an evolved educator uh, through a uh, learning from error process. So I have a presentation. Uh, it's an organized little, I would say, not so structured, but I have my own organization. Uh, organizing, way of organizing the content, but may not be very structured, but a uh, few slides are there. Right, so let me share the screen. Yeah, just a second. Once again, I hope this is visible, the screen. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. So let me once again uh, say that uh, I haven't been acquired any professional qualifications in education. <laughs> I joined academia. Uh, so then uh, pursuing multiple capacities, uh, one capacity as a teacher, without having a teaching degree. A PhD is not a teaching degree, but a very interesting experience. A second aspect of my life is multidisciplinary research, evolving research. And third uh, interesting phase of my life is venturing into programs in terms of fundraising, resource generation, and program creation educational system creation. That's why, that's why I mentioned a lot of errors and learning from errors. So 
outcome based education obe again i have been reading it uh, trying to understand uh, reflect on it and i think it has certain interesting facets but not fully convinced still uh, retain my criticisms on it that's the other part of it because i have done a uh, reasonably good literature review on it of course it comes from uh, one of the pioneering works by spady uh, 1994 uh, who is a practitioner and when he initiated the work initially it was more pertinent to schools then it was taken up for higher education one reason was higher education was in crisis of course uh, whether it's prestigious institution ivy league the institutional league or oxbridge or india good universities including iits and iim crisis not crisis is not alien to them it is part of them part and parcel of even the best institutions the crisis so one crisis i can tell you one crisis is if you go to higher education there is a prestige league i publish in our, in good journals as a scientist or a social scientist publish in good journals then somehow people say that means evaluating me is devoid of devoid of devoid of it's devoid of my credentials as teacher it's independent of my credentials as a teacher whether i teach well or not look at my publication so that's a tendency separating teaching and research having said it some of the best uh, researchers whom we see where are where the best teachers uh, i think the discipline where i'm from is a classic case economics economics if you see one of the best teachers is nobel laureate uh, professor paul samuels or uh, for that matter amartya sen is also one of the best teachers so paul samuels sen for them teaching undergraduate post graduate courses were very very essential apart from creating ideas doing studies that's also the case with uh, cambridge statistician spiegel halter he is one of the best statisticians in the world spiegel halter cambridge he is also one of the best teachers that's also the case with massachusetts of institute technology there's one of the i i follow him very well uh, the teacher professor who teaches calculus gilbert professor gilbert so he says e raised to x from its genesis to its applications so that's the spirit of it uh, so there are people who think teaching and research are separate domains and the teacher doesn't mean i do research i am the researcher probably that is independent of my teaching but then there are also people who say uh, both are interdependent teaching research go hand in hand so that's the crisis that's a crisis point when someone says both are separate processes that's an issue so that's the context i guess outcome based education emerged in a major way not without problems a classic case it it went through several spirals of evaluation classic case is australia australia this was implemented in early 90s or it it still being practiced or promulgated but then it came to a stumbling block it was not a success and in india it's it was primarily implemented in uh, te- techno- technic- technical higher education technological higher education but then uh, ugc system especially uh, liberal arts and science universities and colleges were not really following it up it doesn't matter it doesn't mean that they were all doing bad job and also it doesn't mean that iits were are hallmarks of excellence in teaching uh, I, if someone says iit is the hallmark of excellence i denounce it all heartedly because i am from that institution i think i have right to say these are not the hallmarks of great things but anyway that is outcome based 
education. But then from Spady, I picked a few points. Then I come to my own experience of outcome. So I'm not denouncing outcome-based education, but I'm saying outcome-based, we should not be worshipful of outcome-based. Unless it changes with times, it will also become a liability sooner or later. So I picked these points. I think it, it can be seen. Fundamentally, uh, four blocks. Performance. So Spady gave a diagram. I uh, articulated the way I went. So there is an overlap between this and what Spady gave. But this is not what exactly Spady gave. So that deviation is there. So one issue is performance. Second is curriculum. Third is technology. And Spady talks about, apart from technology, interaction, interactive processes. But I, nowadays, you know, with digital technologies, technology and interaction are uh, mingled with, intermingle very well. Then assessment. So technology, when I say it's a social space, it's an interactive space. Then let's see the uh, symbiosis, symbiotic existence. Performance and curriculum. There's a bridge that is direction. We can see here. Direction is set. Then the curriculum and technology design emerges. And the technology and assessment, uh, the whole issue of delivery comes up. And the assessment and performance. This is where perhaps I think most of our institutions really struggle. I, I've seen a lot of struggles. I think it's a big struggle because it's not in our DNA, cultural DNA. It's not our mistake, by the way. Indians are not into documenting. It doesn't mean we are bad. It's there in our memory many times. It's also a cultural thing, documenting. So direction, three, four Ds emerge out of it. Direction, design, delivery, documenting. From my personal capacity, uh, I may be wrong, exactly wrong, but what I found, usually documentation is pretty weak. Same part also, not so good. Whereas uh, there's so much emphasis given on direction and delivery. But then it's a skewed approach because a faulty design but good direction can uh, cause a veiled delivery. We think delivery is good, actually delivery is bad. And because why it's happening, there's no documentation, appropriate documentation because it's static. So I think from Spady, I found it very interesting, this part. Uh, so now I bring two dimensions. Uh, I, what I'm going to do, UGC came up with a document on uh, outcome-based education. But then I juxtapose that with something called knowledge management. That's one thing I uh, learned very, very, very uh, studious manner. I still I try my best to juxtapose situations that way. So I hope you can see it. On vertical dimension, it's outcomes. I drawn it again from UGC document, but then I tweaked here and there. Uh, not exactly what UGC says, because I don't have any accountability to what UGC writes. It's crucial for me to internalize what, what is written. So, yes, that is what. There's a document. You can see i given the reference, including the web, web link. Uh, this came in UGC. This was published by UGC in 2021. I guess uh, this uh, write-up write was influenced by the experience of AACT, All India Council of Technical Education, especially uh, in the field of technology and technical education and management as well. Horizontal axis, horizontal dimension we plot. Uh, this is taken from a journal article. Nanaka is a Japanese author. 
uh, you know, Nanak, I don't know how you might have heard or you might not have heard, but he's a, he's a very interesting author. Nanaka says uh, that even a company, you go to a company, company for a company, it's crucial to be behave like a university. You should behave like a university. Then, uh, so because Nanaka says university as a way of creating and engaging with knowledge. This is the way. Socialization, externalization, internalization, and combination. What is socialization? Socialization is uh, talk. But you know, uh, we know Paul saying talk. What is there? It's a good question. It's a problem. Because I published an article in Journal of Social Structure. Uh, it's a journal published by Carnegie Mellon University. We published an article. Our hypothesis was that Social network between scholars is crucial to have better publications and better collaboration. We tried to study Indian economics for 40 years history. We split data into 10 years windows, so four decades. Then we applied social network tool and understood, tried to understand the evolution. So evolution is pretty weak. That means Indian universities, colleagues are very friendly. They have tea and coffee together, but never write to it. No writing. But they talk anything else. Maybe about uh, possibilities of uh, going for a trip, so, which is all good. But it's changing. But collaboration as a venture, knowledge venture is very slow because is there purposeful socialization happening in college and university? So, for example, my university, there is a quadrangle. People assemble over there, but then do they engage in purposeful conversation? I doubt. Then that's where leadership matters. You have to work very hard on <laughs> purposeful socialization. Then we can juxtapose these things. How we integrate this with these dimensions, vertical dimensions. We'll come to that each. Then the question of so socialization means you have something in your mind, you talk to your colleague that create an ideation. So, uh, uh, you know, lighter sense, it's called grapevine. You can gossip around. That's also meaningful. <laughs> but is it meaningful for university is a question. <laughs> so socialization is one. It's called tacit knowledge, tacit knowledge transfer through a social network system. See, for example, uh, there is a, uh, yeah, I work on uh, labor market or sustainability transition. So do I have a common ground with another colleague while having a cup of coffee and tea to get into an argument with? Even if my colleague doesn't agree with me, still retaining all civility and can we have coffee as well as uh, good conversation, which can become a product. So that's where socialization matters. Nanaka found that this happens in a Japanese companies, shopping floor, shop floor, not shopping floor, shop floor. Uh, workers, uh, every worker talks to another worker about uh, problems they face. So then uh, they also talk to managers. So through conversation, a lot of problems, are po problems pop up and they uh, register it in their memory. The second dimension is externalization. Externalization is again, uh, I can come to that point, the action point. Uh, we talk things, but then can we convert that into a reproducible idea, either in the form of article or an invention, which we call innovation. So that's where patenting uh, plays a crucial role. You think about, ideate it. But that part is also very it's, I think it's emerging in India, by the way. But then how fast it's catching up and has to wait and see. But then more critically, we have to align this with outcomes. I'll come to that point. Then let's go to the definition internalization. Internalization is again very crucial. Internalization is, there's an idea. 
say for example you say a plus b all square but how we internalize it a plus b all square has many meaning see when you apply this to probability a means uh, head securing uh, b means tail occurring but then one should know if head occurs it precludes tail to occur it it also means in health prevalence of incidence of disease or not is disease happening i have covid not having covid and is that's called internalization but then this is just a school algebra a plus b all square but what what does it mean for analytics is a internalization issue similarly i i put this question right just for the sake because i interview students for msc analytics course yeah we get even btex from iit bombay etc i ask this question to them a plus b all square well you know yes we i know a square plus b square plus 2a but can you put that into a data structure with rows and columns uh, that means uh, can you have an excel sheet in this equation a plus b all square i haven't got an answer yet the answer is this uh, you can convert that into a different structure ab that is row uh, vector input data then there is 2 by 2 matrix in which one uh, all values are same 1 1 1 1 then multiply it with a uh, column vector ab so you get a spreadsheet in between so that's the, i think uh, th this very tough actually that part internalization can blame people but then i learned from my nephew recently he is in second standard so you know, i think indian certificate some icsc or something not cbsc that kid was solving the problem there's a tree tree has three birds every tree has three birds there are 10 tree uh, 10 such trees how many birds are there so uh he said he said he said i know but i'm not convinced tending to 330 what I, i i was surprised why are you not convinced uh, it is tending to 330 he said i have never seen such tree 10 trees each ha each having three birds i never seen never in my life what i have been seen you ask me to believe so <laughs> your friends <laughs> mathematics and reality it's a logic but then so this kind of questions come so that's where internalization is an interesting problem we'll come to that uh, on each domain uh, outcome domain but then i'm very little uh, naive on it because i'm not a trained teacher i don't have a ba degree so please excuse me for that i'm just sharing my experience the fourth dimension that is uh, combination combination is this what is happening in chat gpt now chat gpt you want a r programming code on creating uh, uh what is a pi diagram you get the code this code already exists that is more combinatorial Uh, combi combi co combination so formula to formula curating it data curation i know data curation quite well because I i've been doing it especially uh, you know we we created something like periodic table of human engagement in india something like that size from uh, data uh, large data sets for which we got doish peter so combinatorial is that you have an existing piece of knowledge you have another existing piece of knowledge through semantics and syntax can you bring them together fuse them together so that's very interesting process so chat gpt does that exactly artificial intelligence does that but then the problem is is it a very interesting process it can be quite quite foolish process also i think that i'll come to that 
So friends, I am, I ho hope this horizontal dimension is clear, right? Socialization, externalization, internalization, and combination. Now let's look at what UGC says. Then let's see. The first is disciplinary, they say uh, outcome, disciplinary knowledge. Uh, then uh, the question is, uh, let's talk about uh, sociology, economics, or physics, math. So mathematics, for example, what is socialization? So for calculus is a classic case. I think socialization, uh, I tried this strategy once. What is arithmetic progression and what is geometric progression? I think even master's degree students, although they know formula, because they are well learned in eighth standard or seventh standard. But then uh, it's crucial to engage these things with human life. Does Trigger grow at geometric progression? Tough for Tiger. Tiger, Tiger. Tiger's population doesn't grow at geometric way. Two into two, then two raised to two, two raised to three, two raised to. Does it? But rats in Bombay grow at the rate of uh, geometric way. Grows at geometric rate. Then it calls for questions further, right? Many system, many explanations come because for a tiger, it's not easy to have a territory. Poor tiger, it has to have its own territory. It has to mark its territory. Its energy requirement is humongously big. So adaptation is not very easy. Whereas rats can adapt anywhere. They don't have requirement. Even if there is a nuclear holocaust, they're smart enough to sustain. Science says it. So that's the meaning of arithmetic progression and geometric progression. But then, can we bring all these terminologies to socialization process? That means I, I'm having tea now. Yes. Kappa. So, having a kappa, uh, can I talk all these terms? <laughs> Other, otherwise, Circulating knowledge becomes very tough. So it's a very challenge. I, I also face that challenge. That passion matters. So, uh, but then uh, it's a big challenge for teachers. Some teachers can, they, they try their best to do it. Some of them are successful. I'm not very successful, frankly speaking. When I faced my ne uh, uh, nephew, I became very naive. I felt naive. Have you ever seen uh, such trees with equal number of birds. I've never seen. So, socialization is very crucial. Now, coming to externalization, that's where I think uh, product making, etc. takes shape. Similarly, internalization, again, question reflections are crucial. Then, uh, comb combinations. So, I think we have already brought in. So th that's also the case with communication. Communication is more about socialization and internalization. Whereas critical thinking is very crucial in the case of uh, we can say internalizing because unless we engage in critical thinking, that doesn't happen. So problem solving, analytical reasoning, research skills, teamwork. Teamwork, again, look at that. Why is teamwork very important? I think I agree with UGC framework on that because in higher education, not all continue to do higher education. It's quite crucial for uh, graduates to get job. But nowadays, most of the jobs are team oriented. The organizational systems want people to put together things instead of one person doing a particular thing. Multiple people work together to get things done, to work towards a goal. That's where teamwork matters. Where socialization is very crucial. Internalization is very crucial. Whereas if you say digital ability, along with socialization, externalization also matters. Uh, do you Can you broadcast things through a web system? I'm going to demonstrate to you as a teacher, how I done. Really, I, I do, I'm not that digitally savvy. Maybe you, you may be far ahead of me, but 
I'll show my humble efforts what I do. Internalizing then uh, how, how digital systems allow people to internalize then combinatorial processes. Self-audit. Self-audit means without much fear and risk aversion, can I take, can I remain accountable and take decision? This is where students, see, I do this experiment quite well. I tell, I give students uh, my questions 10 hours before. I, I, teach, a, I teach computing, computing and uh, social, uh, mathematical sociology, social networks. So I teach them uh, R programming. Uh, how do you define dimensions, visualize all those stuff. Then I give them questions. 10 hours before. Then they have to come to class. While coming to the class, bring all materials you can. Have to tell everything. And then exam starts. But during the exam, they can talk to anyone. You can move around. I will not use any vigilante. I'll just take my seat. Observe. What I observe, they make a pattern. They confine themselves to it, although there are freedoms and liberties. And also I plotted the performance curve. It's more like bell curve. Not exactly bell curve. There is heterogeneity in performance. So what I understood, children, uh, higher, especially uh, maybe school children and college children, college students, they have proclivity to understand things and uh, order themselves. Uh, of course, not all teachers will agree with me on it. How to do away with vigilante. But then, my questions were very tough. I put very tough questions. This I learned from my teacher in IIT Bombay. We had this, I was a very tough student, I'll tell you. When teachers prove theorems on board, any mistake from teacher, I would jump and go to the pulpit and say, this is wrong. You, I will, I'll immediately take a chalk and write on the other side of board an alternative proof. So then one teacher told me, uh, you come only for exam because you are a disturbance. But anyway, that's a very interesting thing. But then, uh, our teachers were very innovative. One teacher uh, gave us a question. A, a frame five questions and answer five questions. Very tough it was. <laughs> question gets marks, answer, answer also gets marks. You get marks for both questions and answers. So I think uh, that's a, that, that, that really testifies trust in uh, students. But then uh, that's a very, I, I know it's very tough. I mean, I don't, I don't know. That's where we, the world is moving towards. Because imagine uh, now in the chat GPT world, uh, chat GPT can give you, gives, I mean, you give something to students, chat GPT can solve it. <laughs> so, Preparing uh, questions is also a very tough process. It should be convincing for a student to engage with that. So friends, I think these dimensions really emerge. Scientific reasoning, uh, similarly multicultural orientation. That, let me tell you, I've been uh, seeing it as an important issue. Uh, maybe some students are accustomed to certain cultures in terms of uh, diet, in terms of orientation, but your uh, classmate believes in something else. Their dietary habits are different. Uh, ideologies are different. Uh, beliefs are different. Uh, hobbies are different. But then can you make a tea? It's not a situation of uh, birds of same feather flock together, which sociologists call homophily. Homophily. Rather, people of different feather uh, move with a common purpose. Because society is like that. We, we all have different pursuits, different ways of doing things. But then, can we do it? So, another crucial thing is, similarly, 
ethical awareness. This is also a very crucial thing in the world of chat GPT or uh, uh, Grammarly. See, you, you don't need to be very good in English. Even I say, see a sentence I'm saying, I went to Chembur Station, even if I write, or I went to uh, Reserve Bank of India, I can write, I bank reserve went. Grammarly will, if I have subscription to Grammarly, now the score, Grammarly gives you score. Uh, you may get 30 because subject verb object is not properly done. But Grammarly will give you that. It will correct it. So the correct one, it, it gives. I went to Reserve Bank of India. So we are moving to, uh, towards that kind of thing. But now the question is, if technology does things for you, what, what about your accountability? Right? Because your creativity, originality, that matter, matters. Will you, be, will you remain accountable to your creativity, your abilities, you, you, you as self? That, all these matter, actually. And that's where constitution, awareness about constitution and uh, the learning we have from our peers, senior peers, parents, teachers, etc. help. But co constitution is also very crucial. Understanding about uh, every other person from the lens of dignity and rights. Friends, leadership. I think is, uh, is leadership something to be taught? Uh, my fellow professors teach leadership very well. But then this question arises, uh, is something to be taught? It can be taught well. There are leadership models, but there's also innate leadership in us. This leadership in every student, teacher. So how to trap it? So that's where the socialization, externalization, internalization, uh, all these really come. Even, I, I may be introvert. Huh? I refuse to talk to people. I'm not very confident to talk to people. Probably I'm very good at desk work. That's the level of heterogeneity. So probably e e e e leveraging on that particular ability again, emerge as a leader. I, I, I know I'm one of my friends is a uh, global CEO of a company. I won't name him. He's from Belgium. Uh, one of the world's biggest public relation company. He was the CEO. And you won't believe he's ultra introvert. A good chunk of time, even I'm introvert. I'm proud to be introvert. At times I'm extrovert, but largely introvert. But there is a preference to remain as introvert for me. But then introvert doesn't mean I lack skills or leadership. That's the case with many students. They may not be extroverts. But then they can learn from extroverts. Similarly, extroverts can learn from introverts. Of course, the lifelong leadership. Uh, because I, I, I think I've been to Amritsar uh, and uh, uh, this place, um, Patiala, recently. The vice chancellor of the university told me, you know the meaning of Sikh. Sikh means learn. L learner. S Sikh is a learner. <laughs> So uh, I think uh, learning throughout is in our life. Pursuits, different pursuits, spiritual pursuits or uh, whatever social background we are from. There, is, there are some uh, inclination to learn, but then lifelong, I think spelling is wrong. Uh, I, I think lifelong, A, L, E, instead of L, E, A, I put, but then, uh, by habit, we ignore it. Learning, I wrote, but then all read learning. <laughs> so, friends, I think uh, this is one structure I put to you, but not as a very seasoned practitioner, but or seasoned uh, scholar. But it's from my life, what I'm doing. But I'll show you some of my experiments. Very, I think I, uh, this is exactly an hour. Due, one hour duration, right? It's a one hour, one hour duration or? Sorry, uh, I, I didn't check that. Two hours, but we can. No, have okay, sorry, sorry. Yeah, then I, I want to, uh, I thought it's one. I can, I can. Yes. Okay, yes. I, I'm. Discussion or anything. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm trying to say 
Uh, where are we moving to? Uh, this is a big question. So I have uh, picked, I would rather say I've done a cherry picking. So I may not be exactly right. Cherry picking means uh, what dominates here is my experience, my prejudices. So it's not, you may disagree with it. One issue which I picked is adaptation. Another uh, that is vertical. Horizontal dimension I picked, cherry picked, I would use, the, I would use this word, autonomy. Autonomy is something uh, what, what I mentioned, my nephew's interface with me. Uh, this many, I've never seen that kind of tree. But then, would, 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 are we going to have that kind of learning system wherein people can raise questions? So I think uh, we have ample, we have many mathematics teachers. Huh? Some are very good, exciting, thanks to them people learned. But there, there are also mathematics and science teachers or language or social science teachers who might have dissuaded many potential great minds. Anyway, there's no point in blaming anyone. <laughs> it's a fact. But then the point here is, would students have ample opportunity to engage with questions? Or are concepts thrust on people? Forcibly. Actually, uh, this is what the question is. In fact, uh, probability is one area I'm very much interested. Probability. You know, there's some problem with probability. I, I learned it from Fisher, one of the proponents of statistics, who wrote one of the first major books as early as 1930 or 30s or prior to it. See, uh, there is there is a very interesting question. In research methodology, people come across this question. You have to take a sample. We want to do a survey, survey of students. We take students from St. Xavier's College, beer students, all students. So is it the population or sample? I used it as an unlearning opportunity because People think it's a population. Population, people say it's a population of St. Xavier students. But if you tell this to Fisher, Fisher says no. Because uh, population, although it exists, but you can't count population. Population of BH students all over the world or India, we don't know. We know it exists, it exists, but can you count it? But then there should be some equivalent to it, right? That's what is called probability distribution. Characteristics of probability is called parameter. And then the sample, you get some data points, which is called statistic, maybe mean or median. That gets compared with properties of probability. So there's no real population. There is real population. It's like we say faith. We say at this point, right? Does God exist? Very tough to answer. We say, yes, I experience God, but I can't tell you what the God is. I can also say I never experienced God. When someone says I experience God, I can also say I never experienced God. So the point is, there are mat this is a matter of chance. Even God is a matter of chance. For some people, it's yes. For others, they are not very confident about it. I, I, I guess concerning uh, number of beard students, we know it exists. Can you count? Can you enumerate it? That's a million dollar question. <laughs> That's like my nephew's question. How many such trees are there? He's my teacher. Look, he's my teacher. He said, how many such trees? You give me evidence. So, we know that uh, there is aggregate sigma of uh, beard students all over the world, all, all over India. But uh, you don't have any data with you in Excel sheet or graph paper. So that's why Fisher said population is represented by probability. 
probability distribution, maybe bell curve, then we call it normal distribution. For rare events, we call it Poisson distribution. Or if it's, I like coffee, yes, no, I, it's called discrete distribution, binomial. So that's where the questioning part comes. But then you don't have to agree with uh, Fisher. Uh, Fisher is not fully right on, it, on things. That's where uh, another paradigm in statistics emerged, Bayesian. Bayesian, that's where autonomy again and coming to autonomy issue. You know what happens? Uh, there's something called model. You say that. Uh, there is something called consumption, which is a function of income. The question is, that's one model. Can models also vary? Or should models remain fixed? That's, a, that's again an unsettled question. So these are the thing, things, autonomy and adaptation. Why I'm going to I, I, uh, emphasize this factor? Adaptation. There are reasons for that. You can see it here. Future of work. Future of work means there are technologies emerging, te digital technologies, disruption. Classic case with us is Chat GPT. It's not. It's it's not like Google. You Google. You Google. Say for example, you want Mumbai. You type Mumbai. It's to. It creates. It generates links. Whereas chat GPT is a kind of language model. But it does exactly, it curates languages based on interdependence and similarities and creates a pattern out of it. So that's a change. But then the question is, uh, our students, will they cope with this? Or will that make them irrelevant? If it makes them irrelevant, it's equivalent to saying the technology has made people like us irrelevant. It's about our relevance or irrelevance in the wake of technological innovations like digital systems, like artificial intelligence. So another uh, crucial element is climate change. Needless to say, what is climate change? We feel it. It's in our experience. Rising mercury. And the heat is up. It goes beyond the threshold. I've been working on it. I, I got an article recently. I think I've been mentioned it in my CV, etc. It's, it's but accepted by nature uh, scientific reports. We, we've done a study on, uh, uh, what do you call it? Biofertilizer. There, you know, two types of fertilizers exist. One is chemical, another is organic or biofertilizer, sustainable inputs. But in, why, why I'm saying it? You see, you know, the recent UN sustainable development data, India's nitrogen efficiency index, it's in worrying levels. The healthy number is somewhere around 0.3, but ours is 0.89. It means soil is dying. Our soil is dying. Of course, one reason is uh, over chemical fertilizers. But the question is, we know that. We know that chemical fertilizer contribute to it. But is there a way out? So we've done a study. We found that 95% of organic consumption, organic fertilizer or biochemical fertilizer, 95% is consumed by 5% very rich farmers. This is not to say poor farmers never do it. A few of them do it. But most of these people who use biofertilizer and organic fertilizer are richest or higher percentile. Whereas 95% who consume chemical fertilizer, good chunk of them are poor. 
but they are the one who give you food now that's the dilemma one hand it's not easy to move from chemical to organic it's not easy but it's needed because what happens is the soil absorbs carbon but then with nitrogen level nitrogen efficiency index at precarious level it rather emits carbon and further it contributes to temperature warming process so soil is dying warming is up but then uh, sustainable people who do sustainable farming they don't supply to they don't necessarily supply to food corporation of india so it's very interesting but so adaptation issues so we can see this autonomy low high you see this horizontal axis low high adaptation low high and i visualize four systems a b c d a b c d is autonomy very low adaptation also very low may even if we have an outcome based system i think it's not desirable for people students and maybe the students from this system may have tremendous difficulties there is also combination b adaptation is pretty low of course our autonomy is given maybe b is better than a undoubtedly but the problem with b students are very good people they are aware of things they know how to become autonomous but then new changes coming because of climate or uh, population dynamics or, or technology disruptive technology it's a tough scenario for them because they'll be uh, what do you call it full pushed out of the system they remain on unemployed now the system c autonomy low they, they it's it's a tough thing for them to visualize why they exist adaptation is very high they adapt because thanks to uh, skills good skills uh, upgrading is very fast for them but there are serious questions about purpose of life why i am here so but then b it's the reverse they are, they can't cope with uh, new changes in economy and technology but the purpose is very clear the c purpose is very unclear so b economic well being may be low but then spiritual or social well being may not be that bad the c spiritual well being or social well being or overall well being mental health is also at risk whereas economy part is good d therefore is very crucial ability to express freely and the sense of being autonomous at the same time capacity to adapt new systems in terms of uh, ability to work in multicultural environment capacity to engage with new technologies all these things so and uh, we got into now i am going to talk about my institution's experience this experience we uh, we been seeing it because one reason why we we see it one of the core components with our university is our exposure to the reality for most of our courses the whole week there are five days a week right out of that two days students uh are inducted in the field maybe it's, if it's social work they are in the ngo or a health professional they are in the hospital or uh, organizational professional they are in the corporate organization or factory when they come back they face the exam now then in the exam one of the exam means viva voc one of the crucial issues over there is can you align what you learn in the classroom and the field so then you can see in outcome based education it's also crucial to envision what your institution aspires to have visioning is very crucial you can see the heart of our institution that's called vision 
engaging as globally acclaimed social science institute being engaged with people so we don't want to become an engineering college or medical college it's very clear it's very attractive to start medical course but we won't we won't start an engineering college it's only we remain as social science institute because that's our vision engage with people and communities for but the question is why social science it's for sustainable and inclusive development in which community and people play a role so then uh, in order to support it these are the things we see multidisciplinary environment towards sustainable development goals and uh, field action leadership optimal use of financial resources and so on fund including fundraising this is what we done eventually so you can see sustainable development goals 17 of them we mapped it so that so these courses are heterogeneous in nature in terms of where students end up etc but there are many some common points common grounds common ground is sustainable development so that's one uh, particular uh, engagement we done so this is uh, the emerging model of outcome based education that's with us but not exactly what uh, spady said not that way but more like this way but more like this way yes so that there, there was some collective sharing about what we want to aspire or what we want to achieve so just uh, putting an end to it let's have discussion but let me give please give me few more things few more uh, a little, little more time few more opportunities to engage with i would like to show you my uh, experiment as an educator i came up with three programs so you can see it here right visioning so th that came from this vision so i'll stop here at this moment and take you through what we have done just a second just give me a second just give me a second yeah So I came with a Master of Arts and Master of Science Analytics, but I have never studied computer science and so on. Why? Why it came? Uh, I offer a course, labor economics, labor market, and so on, in which cracking big data was part of my routine. That means you have a question: What is the percentage of unemployed among scheduled caste who live in Tripura? I have. that's a conditional query but we have answers to it it's not a very complicated question but you can put complicated question what is the chances that a person belonging to st community who lives in jharkhand getting into an informal job that's a very tough question because you want to calculate its probability so that's how i got into analytics and uh, i have been working with my colleagues so we came with this self financing program master of arts master of science analytics these are the objectives outcomes intended outcomes visualize analyze big data grounded learning on the philosophy of analytics and predictive modeling applying analytics to sustainable development we decided one thing we won't say that this is business analytics this is not business analytics this course is meant for sustainable development analytics that is our vision and mission collaborate live analytics project with industry and civil society benchmarking with global learning standards in analytics modeling economy business organization society and environment 
transforming ideas into data products, human dimensions of data and technology, interactive learning through regular series of seminars and workshops. So it was a challenge, I'll tell you, because Tata Institute of Social Sciences is a social science institute. But analytics is usually offered by IIT, IAM, Indian Statistical Institute, Triple IT, Indian International Institute of Information Technology. It's a challenge because you have to place students, right? You have to place students. So we uh, made it very clear. This course is open to everyone, whether you are a Marathi literature or physics, engineering, we don't care. You have to clear the entrance. So our admission is going on at this moment. This was started in the peak of, at the peak of uh, COVID. And that time we had 1500 applicants. Uh, now the current batch we have, uh, we got 5,300 applicants for 30 seats. And we, we shortlisted out of them 400. Now from 400, we will choose 30. Interviews are going on. And the applicants include graduates from IITs, NITs, uh, major colleges, and so on and so forth. But th this is the fourth batch. And these are our major dimensions, reasons and outcomes. Then course is like this. You can see it, right? Foundation. Foundation means they have to study with other streams at this. Maybe criminology or uh, what is a uh, health, mental health, disaster studies and so on. Then compulsory, open elective, disciplinary electric, field work. That's the uh, engagement with reality, research dissertation. Here this element comes. Your capacity to codify the knowledge. I mentioned it, externalize and combinatorial knowledge. You can even make a product your own, your, of your own. Say, for example, dashboard to predict Bombay Stock Exchange. So these are all taught this way. And I'll tell you, every two years we uh, change it. We don't allow this to sustain. And we charge. Although this is a subsidy, what do you call it? It's a public funded institution. Our charges, our fee is three times more than what uh, other uh, courses charge. But we follow reservation. Deserving students, we work out prospective fellowships and so on. So this is a venture. It's not an easy venture, by the way. So it includes me and my colleagues. One is, one is an engineer from IIT, my uh, junior, done uh, sandwich PhD, IIT Bombay and Monash University in water engineering. Then uh, Unmesh, his name is Kamal, and Unmesh is a PhD in uh, climate change and a postdoc also in climate change. Then two of my PhD students who became PhDs now. It's not that they were recruited directly, they were in, uh, one was doing postdoc in uh, Sweden, he came back, Stockholm. And another uh, student of mine, after PhD, she was working as an advisor with Ministry of Skill. I asked her to resign job and came. She joined. So, four of them. And we also recruited from Indian Statistical Institute and Benares Hindu University. So, I'm saying, uh, I this is our creation. We ventured it. For which we don't use government fund. So, this is one point. So, it was a success, actually. Because first batch, we placed all of them with a median salary of 15 lakh rupees. Second batch is up for placement. Now the placement season is up. It's going on. People are getting placed. Third batch, 85% uh, got, uh, and now it will be done in a few weeks, paid internship. The fourth batch is being recruited at this moment. So that's one. Uh, uh, then what we done? Then NEPK, National Education Policy, 2020. We sat as a team. We came with a new UG program, which is called Analytics and Sustainability Studies. I'll show you its proof. And its uh, admission is through UG set. 
undergraduate uh, undergraduation degree. Uh, wow, yeah, this one. Government of India's UG set. Bachelor of Science, Analytics and Sustainability Studies. I'll tell you how many applicants we get for this. 23,000 applications for 36. And the first batch is, in, uh, they have completed first set. Now second batch will join. And what makes it difference? See, these are the courses. Common courses, natural science, social science, humanities, interdisciplinary major, interdisciplinary minor, research, field work. Then uh, all kind of uh, topic. But that, that's not the point. There are two major field works. One uh, area of field work is semi-arid farming. We take them to Tuljapur, rural Maharashtra, uh, which is on the border of Telangana. Student would know, would study how you create topsoil, organic rich, micronutrient rich topsoil. But then it's, they also learn how, it's di how difficult is it to replicate. So sustainability replication is very tough. So that's one task they are going to learn. Then the second, they're almost two, uh, 30 days, they are going to be with farmers. The second field work is and further challenging. They'll be going to Arunachal Pradesh and Assam to study Brahmaputra, riverine ecology, life along Brahmaputras. Brahmaputra is a multi-country river. It originates from China, flows through India, ends up in Bangladesh. The problem is there is upstream and downstream. So up, downstream, water quality is dropping. People are circumspect about what's going on upstream. Is it pollution? We don't know. We can't go to China and inspect it. It's impossible. So, but then students would come across some of these issues. So that's another experiment done. So now we are planning a major PhD program, multi-country, multi, uh, I think we are working with multiple universities, Monash, Nostri, or Oceania, Europe, there's a French university, and Cornell, uh, USA, etc. I don't know when it comes, I'm working on it, we are working on it. It's called PhD program in sustainability transition and resilience, the science. So we got through three, four good publications very recently on it. So we want that to culminate in educational programs. So all these syllabus, I'll tell you, we will destroy after second year. We will revise it because sustainability transition is very fast. Technologies are very fast. So all these technologies are there. But you can't retain, retain as it is classical subject. You can't adopt this. You have to change it. And the last thing I would like to show you is a Google experiment. Very humble Google experiment I myself do. I have a Google site. As a teacher, I try to be an activist in teaching. So I go over here. So for example, I have a teaching analytics page. Analytics is what I teach. Two things I teach, economics and analytics. So I, I have a set of videos. It's not only by me, my colleagues also. So we engage with it. We, we'll destroy it very soon after some time, but then this is a way of engaging with students. But I am saying this is not a final uh, full stop to things. It's an evolving paradigm. And the crucial objective over here is students should enjoy the autonomy, also the capacity to self-organize. So that's one classic case I would like to give you. Another classic case is the culture of workbooks. If you are interested, you can see it. So for example, one topic I teach is binomial distribution. I give a story over there, a simple Excel sheet and how you work with it. And also it's R programming. 
So that's one. Another critical case I would like to show you is teaching. Teaching, uh, I collaborated with Bombay University for a Swayam course here, Institutional Economics. So I've given the script here, also the video. Then what I do is I have a Moodle course here. This is the learning management system. I post it here. So here what I do is I question the hypothesis that comes from even Nobel laureates. I criticize, critically engage with it using data. So students have to use three layers of data, world level data, it's called pen world data, then India level data. And then they have to pick any two countries uh, and test the hypothesis. Then uh, the recent reports and its videos. Here I also intermediate. I bring my video to say something. But the more, more crucial element is I have a clear philosophy about evaluation. I define levels, then I put my expectations. So that's all. These are my humble initiatives. So I stop share here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, any participant has any question or observation or comment? If we open the forum to you now. Uh, sir, I have one question to you. Uh, you have aligned your uh, courses according to the Sustainable Development Goals. So, so how did you manage that? Because like no poverty, there's something for rural development and also how does it align with that sustainable goal? I didn't understand. See, the, the, you, if you see the UN Sustainable Development Goals, uh, it has sub-goals as well. So then uh, you look at course objectives and subjects. So classic case I can give you is, there is an SDG 8 that talks about decent work and economic growth. And we have aligned uh, some of our courses with that. For example, human resource management and labor relations. And human resource, what is the objective of human resource management? Human resource management is not a, what do you call it? Uh, human resource managers' responsibility is not just to increase profit or contribute to profit. It's also crucial for them to engage with employees on several aspects, be it grievance, be it performance. So that's what converts to economic growth in terms of performance, as well as decent work in terms of entitlements and compensation. So it's not an easy process, by the way. Yeah. It's crucial to see, we have again mental health things. Now, or another case I can give you is our LLM, uh, Masters of Law. It is not LLM, simple law degree. It is access to social justice. Now, you think about the thumb, uh, LT, what do you call it, a Sri Lankan, uh, why is it LTT as a context? Uh, that created a lot of disruption. A lot of refugees landed in India, Sri Lankan refugees, Tamil refugees. And many of them still remain as stateless people. They live in Canada, India, and so on. Then how will they get justice? Similarly, there is India Justice Report recently published by TIS and other agents. I think TIS, government is one of the, uh, is one of the sponsors. If you see Justice India Report, Justice India Justice Report, many under trials have no money to get bail. Maybe you haven't done a big theft or something, a small, uh, Offense for small offense, you were nabbed, put behind bar, but you, you have no money to get bail. Imagine you have no money to get bail. What do you do? You have to seek legal aid, right? So that's also a SDG, but you have to support that SDG. So what we do is in our annual report, the faculty reports publication, we ask, is it Scopus Index, Repo Science Index? We also ask, which SDG is it? You declare your SDG. We cross-check that SDG. 
So as provost chancellor, one of my duties is to cross-check the SDG, SDG. Because SDG is very crucial. So uh, there's no foolproof way of doing it, but we develop processes. And also in classes, we try to propagate this message. So that's one, re one thing I brought out, the documentation part. Documentation is a serious concern uh, for many universities, including Tata Institute of Social Science. We're working on it. But I think it may, it's a big challenge for any university in India, any college in India. Also, that's a big, big issue in outcome-based education. Do you build clarity on documentation and its standards? So that child, uh, uh, my nephew, but that case I told you, how many, uh, how many such trees exist? It's a documentation issue. It's a process. So uh, that's why I think uh, analytics, MSc analytics, we have 34 students. Uh, we place them in 34 companies for internship. That means every faculty has to visit these companies. Some of these are artificial intelligence companies, virtual reality companies, big data companies. But you have to go there and visit in order to understand. For the, yeah, every faculty goes there and asks, next five years, what are the changes you foresee? Number two, looking at our syllabus, do you see we are obsolete? Or do you have any suggestions? So we've done that visit. One of the visits we found that company uses face analytics. That means you, I, I won't name this product. <laughs> you uh, chip into any company, any big showroom, your face is captured. It becomes a graph. And then Binopol enters a uh, shop. My face is captured. Immediately, salesperson gets the data. If Binopol stays five minutes, six minutes continuously, right? Most likely, the average value of purchase will be this much. On the other hand, he crosses the threshold, stays next three minutes, five, six more minutes, purchase value is likely to come down this much. So it's a kind of... Uh, you say uh, back, what do, you, what do you call it? A hyperbola. Now, that means what is the optimal duration for Binopol to get maximum sales value? So this raises both ethical issues and analytical issues. And we should be prepared for that. So then you have to change the syllabus. You have to question yourself. Because industry is changing faster than you change. I've been told by one of my, I won't name, one of the senior industry professionals who was a CEO of a company told me one day. One of the professors in Harvard, his name is Prahlad. He had the habit of burning all teaching materials in after an year. Say after one year ends, he goes to his a uh, fireplace or somewhere, he burns everything. I don't tell everyone should practice it. <laughs> but as a matter of fact, uh, the teacher's proclivity to say we are alien to uh, the dynamics, we, the tendency is not very good. But it's crucial for us teacher to be very dynamic. I'm sure, I'm sure people may not support me in this. Even I used to uh, withstand any such arguments earlier. Now, but I realize changes are very, very fast. This face analytics or AI, artificial intelligence disruption is too fast. So chat GPT and teacher race is very crucial question. Can we become more smarter than ChatGPT, more enlightenment oriented than ChatGPT, because 
chat gpt this is what amartya said long ago although he knew that time he didn't know what what was it to happen he brought a concept called uh, fool, rational rationally foolishness rational foolishness rational fool that means you can be well and dot with information still you can be fool chat gpt has several instances of being a fool despite well informed so you are well informed but a fool that is all, all combination one so teacher can bring that issue and say rational but not absolute fool little bit intelligence is still left <laughs> but chat gpt is possibly hinging towards that it's very rational it coordinates information through an algorithm it's algorithm dependent so therefore it's procedurally rational rational rationality doesn't mean you are wise but can we convince our children that's very tough because they are more convinced by uh, artificial intelligence algorithms even if it has proclivation proclivity to uh, remain foolish that's one challenge for educator especially in outcome based education but outcome based education if you think it's a dogmatic formula i think it's wrong faculty have to move around industry and take data and see that where lies the future how many faculties does it do it i won't ask that question it's very uncomfortable question how many would dare to burn materials after a few years and come up with new materials how many would engage in new innovations i think no point in blaming students because if when they don't get it they rely more on chat gpt artificial intelligence so that's one reason we uh, been working on vision and sdg orientation because there's no water ground water shrinking what chat gpt does nothing no rain can chat gpt solve it <laughs> in uh, some part of west bengal on i think this part uh it's called chicken neck area the border between west bengal and assam uh, there's a lot of elephant menace also it's there in western ghats kerala and so on elephants patchy dunes disrupt human life can chat gpt solve it? artificial intelligence can help but then you need a lot of other senses as well so that's where climate change you need more resilience and uh, more natural intelligence also only artificial intelligence then uh, do the teacher do that job that's a question so outcome based if we retain its uh, cardinal concepts and uh, worshiping there is a chance that it makes us blindfold bl blindfolded and ultra foolish and irrelevant to students they will be scornful of us but then we should have the audacity to progress well i think sorry my words are a bit strong thank you so you know um, there is also that phrase which says technology is pedagogically neutral so you have also shown us that outcome this term can also be neutral it's now how we are going to you know either make it a dogmatic thing make it something which can be a liability or something which can really like when we see the way you are talking you know one phrase which stuck to us 8 years back which you gave 
Vijay sir and myself, you had told us something about quality and quantity. Vijay sir and I have used that, what you have said, sir, that quality education for quantity. And today what I have gained from you is amazing, another line which destroying for sustainability. It's such a paradox, sir. When we talk about something our is sustainable, but we are also talking that if we keep on having the same old dogmatic thoughts, then where is the sustainability? So another thing that today we have also gained. So the picture of outcome is at a higher level. I was just thinking, what would I even tell to summarize what you have said? Because you have taken us to a different realm. You know, when Nonaka speaks about the bar, the platform, the, um, the learning space, and when you said, while having tea, can I have tacit to explicit? Can I, can I move from, if not internalization, at least still externalization? And that is what we try at our own college also to see to it that if we are creating that bar, a, a place of care, a place of understanding, a place of tolerance of different viewpoints. Yes, and uh, when we also started with this outcome-based as a theme, we were also asked by many people, will it sustain? What is it that? Um, are we still thinking about outcome-based? Is it something which is not backward? Is it not taking you still behind? Is it not also similar to outcome, uh, outputs? And today when you are talking about it, sir, there are certain things where I can now give a reflective answer about it, that it is in our hands how we look at this particular paradigm. Can we take it towards moving it further? or then leaving it as it is to an output. Because many, as you also started by saying that it has its own liability, it has its own concerns and anything which remains stagnant where it is, will never be able to uh, take us. But when you showed us also about the different kinds of courses that you have, about the different kinds of outcomes that you are looking at, I think that is a practical side of this MTB that we are only looking at one side, now can we apply it? and not remain for years together one course that we have developed. But are we moving with time to the need of the society? So it, it, it has been a really an eye-opener, sir, especially when as organizers, myself, Vinima and Vijay, sir, we had also gone through this kind of questions because we also thought about it when we are bringing this out. What is it that we are giving back to the faculty? So thank you for bringing out the side where we can show how we can at least use it in that way, in that sense. Yeah? And that combination of knowledge management with Nonaka's uh, uh, SCCI and the outcome, sir, was really beautiful. Oh, thank you. I like that adaptability and accountability also, sir. That was also very well done. Simple, but uh, very thought-provoking. Our own students sir, at B.A.D. ask us, if you don't give us autonomy, if you don't give oh. us that freedom of thought, how will I make my tacit thoughts into explicit? Then, you're, then you are telling me what I should be doing rather than what I want to do. So the, the, have... Exactly. That's where I think UGC has to really transform Correct. its thinking process. Regulate, not only UGC, but the regulatory mindset. Yes. Unfortunately, they have to engage more with some of these issues. Yes. And I think I would like to cite uh, one of our uh, former directors, Professor Armeiti Deshai, who was also UGC chairman. She taught us a big lesson. Uh, she says, why, why, an, why a university exists? Uh, according to her view, two things, uh, people and structure. Hmm. So she says, uh, we have to align more with people. And uh, structure is crucial, but that's not the whole thing. Yeah, but now we live in a different world, right? Especially, you know, IQAC, AQAC, yes. all these things. Yes. It's more structure oriented. There's nothing wrong with that. Structure helps us. Uh, one interesting thing is structure mitigates uncertainty. But structure also puts a big, big onus on us in terms of collection of information, that's okay. But does it translate to people creation mm -hmm. yeah. in terms of quality? I stumbled on this, we stumbled on this question because uh, we collaborate with Punjab now, uh, some universities in Punjab. You know uh, what's happening out there? There are 5,000 plus IELTS centers in Punjab. So very, very out that way outcome oriented. <laughs> 
outcome is very simple. Mm -hmm. uh, clear English test. Why? Therefore, you can emigrate to Canada. But one of the researchers, what she done, she surveyed people have migrated. What, hap what happens is many students, good chunk, more than 95% land in not so good universities in Canada. And if you land in Canada and enroll in a university, you can work 20 hours, 20 hours per week. So initial investment to start or enroll, a, uh, enroll in a university is 22 lakh rupees or something. The parents give somehow, uh, you know, middle income, lower middle income group, they take loan and children go. 20 lakh initial capital. But then if you land up in a work that doesn't have social security number, you are paid lesser than minimum wage. You may get 10 lakh. So after year one, your balance is minus 12. Three years you study, it bulges to 50 lakh. Mm. To overcome 50 lakh deficit, you need to be there for another seven, eight years. By that time, you become naturalized citizen. Okay. But do we exist for that? That means, that is what I mentioned. Sustainability thinking is very crucial. So the question with Punjab universities, not only Punjab, Punjab has some of the best universities. Mm -hmm. Every university, even Maharashtra, this is happening. Do we adequately engage with the questions of change? It's also applicable to me as an educator. So I think now we, we are working on, uh, there's a Punjab, in Patiala there's a university, Punjab, Punjab State's Open University. We are going to have first seminar, uh, what ails Punjab? Anthropos, in, in, we are going to have an international seminar in the month of November or September, I guess. So sustainability is emerging as a massive issue, actually. The Kerala, the state where I'm, is facing a big crunch. Kerala, I think uh, uh, 33,000 students migrated. There are 1,000 panjayats in Kerala. From each panjayat, on an average, 30 students migrated. To where? Australia, New Zealand, uh, European Union, United States, Canada. But then there are many colleges and universities. So, I'm, this is not a question of brain, brain drain, which was happening to IITs and so on. Here, ch uh, parents put a lot of money on children. Mm -hmm. But for children to uh, break even, break the even, it takes 10 years. It's an open invitation to precarious work abroad. And they have to sever emotional ties and social capital. They uh, are entitled to in a beautiful country called India. I think I'm not becoming parochial over here. <laughs> Let people go abroad. There's no harm. It's very good. But then, is it an open invitation to compounded misery or a fruitful life? That question remains. That's where education institutions have to really open up, awaken. I think one participant had a hand raised. Oh, yes. Sorry. I was just thinking. Yes, please. Mr. Devere. Uh, I can't hear? No, uh, that's what I think they wrote in the chat about it. Your presentation. Chat. Okay. Let me just. Let... Yeah. They have complimented you about the varied fields and. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, uh, okay, okay, yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've seen it. Yes, yes. 
So is there any other question or anything that you want to uh, share or the possibilities that sir has opened to us about outcome-based education? Uh, I know, sir, I think it's a little too much to think. We were taking baby steps towards it and then we are also seeing this because this is a perspective which also shows us that how we can take our academics to a higher level, much higher level. And I think the accountability of teachers, what you rightly said, ne? change, understand the needs, academia, connect, industry, connect. It's a huge jet lag kind of, I still feel. We are still in a huge jet lag. We know there's a gap between is and not quite a bit. Actually, one thing I would like to compliment to one point. I just wrote an article. I think it's coming in Journal of Triple mm. it's, it's It's on its uh, way to print. Mm -hmm. uh, I wrote with my PhD student who is from Portug Portugal, uh, Carla. Mm -hmm. See, it's very clear. Uh, we studied triple helix. Triple helix means three forces coming together, industry, university, and government. Mm -hmm. India has one of the weakest triple helix. What happens in India is university works with industry, uh, government works with the university, government works with the industry separately. So they don't take one problem and work together. Mm. It's, it's whereas it's relatively higher in countries like Finland, etc. So SDG 17 is all about partnership. But do we adequately engage with it? This mm. question, I, I closely work with government of India on it. G7, G17, uh, G17. Uh, uh, we we are the knowledge partners to Ministry of yeah. Finance on sustainable finance. So this is one issue we bring because sustainable finance, one issue is G17, people move from one country to another. But the problem I face is, I work here, I earn PF. Can I uh, carry or move PF to another country? The problem is if I move from this place to Canada, I can't get my PF here, the status of social security over there. There should have been continuity. But here I have to liquidate my PF and I go over there. There it's merely a currency. PF is actually it's my, it's a fruit of my effort. It's an entitlement, not simple currency. Mm. So right, human right Social right uh, integration is what. So this I'm I'm saying, but then the, 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 this is what really sometimes when you engage with government or industry, you get these insights. Then you can immediately float a course. We are and now <laughs> bringing it. Uh, we are starting sustainable finance very soon mm -hmm. because of our partnership with, with Ministry of Finance. But then Ministry of Finance. People might think it's because you, you are a non-institution, you easily get that project. Not exactly. You Not exactly. There is a bidding, there's, there's a kind of competition happening. And they give you just sometimes just two, three days to write 6,000 words. And the fine morning, you should reach Delhi. And it gets reviewed by UNDP reviewers. That means early morning, 4 o'clock, you take a flight to Delhi because meeting starts at 10. Then uh, we, we, I think this is what happens in TIS most of the time. Uh, there is a common flight for us. Air India, either 9 o'clock or uh, 12 o'clock flight. Then we reach here. So many such visits actually. But then you get interesting policy insights. So I think not only this is the case of the government of India, when we engage with even municipal corporation in a limited capacity, we get many problems to study. Then we create a document, which can be a kind of material for students later. It's not an easy process, I think, but it's worth looking at. That's how we started MSC Analytics. 
because we got a project from uh, Tata. Uh, that company doesn't exist now. Uh, Docomo. <laughs> hmm. Docomo wanted publicity, so they wanted to estimate uh, what would be the money multiplier if you have a mobile handset. So we had to do a big data exercise. Then that became a stepping stone to start executing postgraduate diploma in analytics. We made surplus out of it. That gave us seed money to start MSc analytics and made an organization out of it. That led to BS analytics. Now we want to globalize it. I'm, I'm going to sell it. I'm flying to Dubai Expo. I will be a salesman over there, not a professor. I'm going to sell it. Good evening, sir. Yes. Yes, actually, the session was very informative. Myself, Raj Lakshmi, and I belongs to nursing profession. And oh, great. Okay. So out of curiosity, I also joined in this uh, FDP. And okay. I'm working in College of Nursing. Where? Uh, in Maharashtra only, in Ames, Nagpur. Okay. Oh, great. Okay. So <laughs> I was like thinking in nursing, like if... Uh, uh, sustainable goals will be applied over structured curriculum. So how much it will be, like scope of that will be? I guess, uh, good. Uh, it's a very good question. Brilliant question. I think uh, nursing is one area. I also, I've done some research before. Uh, what I found, uh, nursing is one of the most relevant disciplines and branches in the world uh, in two ways. One is it suffered due to gender discrimination. If you see the health industry, <laughs> uh, there is a tendency to evaluate professions on the basis of mind and body. So physicians were unduly uh, rated because people used to say, doctor, you have to play with mind. Nurse, it's more care work. That's precisely wrong because nursing also involves a lot of mental efforts. What a nurse can do, doctor cannot replace. And nursing as a profession is becoming more relevant in the emerging demographic scenarios. But I guess governments have to work really hard to make it decent more. Now there is a sad trend happening. Countries like India, Kenya, where nursing density is pretty low, for 1 million people, you have less number of nurses. But most of these nurses leave these countries where nurses are short in supply and destined to UK, where nursing density is relatively higher. But you can't blame nurses for that because they don't get an honorable treatment in a country like India. Of course, government pays very well. But concerning private pay, private sector hospitals, they pay poorly, maybe barring a few exceptions. Whereas if you look at a physician, physician, there are women in uh, that profession, men, but it's more a masculine profession. You can see both men and women as physicians, but it's masculine, it's, it's value system. It's not feminine. So I think if nurses are not treated well in India, we are going to face existential crisis in India, healthcare systems, because nurses play a massive role. So I think, but then nursing education has to really reform itself. It has to innovate. If you see SIMAGO, Scopus Index, Scopus Journal Classification, nursing's journal publication from India is very less. If you see India for all subjects, India stands at four. China first, then America, America first, then China, then Germany and India, UK or Germany and India, something. India is fourth. I think it is Germany, UK, then India. But in nursing, where India stands, we can't see it. That means there is no investment. So I think nursing institutions have a a very transformative role to play, but then we have to strategize it. There is scope, but what is an active ingredient to sustainable health? But uh, there's so much 
preference given to doctors less attention to nurses although they are more they do more meaningful work thank you sir <laughs> i do you agree I, 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 on that <laughs> we we always proud of our profession sir whomever uh, thinks whatever it is <laughs> I, one of my phd students is a nurse okay one of my phd students <laughs> okay sir thank you so much yeah. for the informative sir okay thank you so if there is no other question or if there is uh, some time you need you can still put your query or question in the lms and then we can direct it to sir once any such question comes sir so uh, as i've already said sir uh, this has been extremely I, i i don't even know how to put it in words again a very disturbing session again a session which will make us think more again a session which will waken up as you say that woke feeling that wake up the thoughts which will move to a better future and i think these are what was our intention when we started this that although this is something which is a loaded term can we look at it from a different perspective and we are getting resource people who are also like you showing us from different perspective how you can look at it and hopefully by the end of the fdp we will be able to also move towards a much better uh, i do not know uh, better thought process at least if not getting into just an outcome so thinking about it thinking over it is something that we want to do thank you once again for sparing we know how how packed your process was at your airport we troubled you where your client <laughs> any time and anywhere we have troubled you but we are so glad and it is our it's our profit sir vini ma'am we were so grateful to vini ma'am that she could persistently see to it that you can you. come over here thank you so much we would like but uh, as i'm telling you we have included in our syllabus nonaka as well as uh, spedi so maybe some of my students maybe we would like to come and visit you or come and see your uh, institute with your different outcomes and how these are going to be out so thank you very much uh, dear participants thank you all for being very patient and also uh, i think it's still coming it's still being sinking in you but any questions any uh, observation anything that you want to convey to sir please let us know thank, thank you. you thank you sir so i enjoyed to the hilt so it has been thank very interesting you, journey see you again sometime oh yes oh yes okay goodbye